Wingman Joker thank you for listening to this channel and please support the channel. Please subscribe. Chapter 31 Endo's Little Brother During the training session, the sidelines of the pitch was covered with crowds of students. A lot of students were flocking over the pitch to witness them train. Just why are there so many kids gathered over there? Coach Miura complained. Ha ha. Maybe it's all because of Hiro. They're probably here to see him play. He's become somewhat like a celebrity. Honda-san chuckled. As Coach Miura and assistant coach Honda were conversing with each other, Hiro was preparing to test out his newfound talent against Endo. While Endo was scanning the goalpost and screaming at the players of Ukami Elementary School to cover up the gap in the wall, Hiro was walking towards the center half of the pitch while holding the ball in his hand. Is he planning to shoot the ball from the center half? Coach Miura bewilderingly questioned. Seems like it sir. Honda-san answered. Both of them were baffled by his actions. But as Hiro began to step back from the ball, they began to stare at him with eyes full of anticipation. He took few steps back and paused for a while. While keeping his eyes fixated at the ball, he was preparing to launch himself. Sigh tilde. And as he released a deep sigh, he ran towards the ball. The players who acted as a wall, blocking his shoot course, looked at him with eyes filled with terror and nervousness. Endo tried to cover as much gap as possible to stop the ball from entering the net. But before he could even react, the ball went past him. All he could feel was the swoosh sound of the ball as it touched the net. What? The ball flew like a missile shot from a cannon. Did you see that? The expression of shock displayed by the students who were standing beside the pitch said everything about that goal scored by Hiro with his newfound talent, free kick of Roberto Carlos. After that match with Karasuno Elementary School, they didn't struggle much against the opponent they faced in quarterfinals and semifinals. At quarterfinal, they defeated Sawamura Elementary School with a score of 4-0. Similarly at semifinals, they defeated Kenkoku Elementary School with a score of 3-1 and booked their spot in the finals from first segment. They cleared quarterfinal and semifinal of the tournament without breaking much sweat. And in both of those matches, he wasn't even required to use his skill. Thus, he couldn't demonstrate his newfound talent. From second segment, Rondon Elementary School came out as victor after barely defeating their opponent with a single goal lead in semi-finals and booked their spot for the final. Everybody expected Rondon Elementary School to make it to the final from second segment. However contrary to their expectation of first segment, Ukami Elementary School came out as a victor instead of Karasuno Elementary School which was shocking to many people. So you've made it to the finals of prefectural tournament. Takashi questioned Hiro while both of them were playfully passing the ball. Um, Hiro silently nodded his head. They were having a father and son moment with each other. Just then Takashi paused. What's your dream Hiro? Takashi questioned. Why are you asking about that now? Hiro mumbled awkwardly. And as he playfully took a peek at his father's face, he couldn't speak anything. His father wasn't asking him such questions out of nowhere. I want to be the best footballer in the planet. Reverberating to the emotions of his father, he bluntly stated that he wanted to be the best footballer in the planet. I see, Takashi mumbled with a satiated look on his face. As the day of the final was approaching, the players were starting to get nervous. Even with the confident boost from winning against Karasuno Elementary School, they were still having nervous breakdowns because of the final. It was totally natural for those players of Ukami Elementary School to have nervous breakdowns, after all it was their first major tournament. And moreover on their first ever major tournament debut, they reached the final after defeating one of the powerhouse football team of their prefecture. What are you doing over there Endo Senpei? It's already time to head home. Hiro questioned Endo, who was sitting all by himself beside the goalpost even after the end of the training. Oh it's you Hiro, nothing much, I'm just enjoying the fresh air. And shouldn't you be heading home? What are you doing over here at this time? Endo replied while blankly staring at the sky. No. My mom will be arriving a little late today. So I thought, I might as well shoot some balls. Endo didn't reply anything and continued to stare at the evening sky above his head. After a while, he stood up. Are you worried about the match against Rondon Elementary School? Hiro questioned. However Endo didn't reply anything. Just as Hiro was about to leave, he heard something. I'll be facing against my brother. Endo whispered. Huh, you have a brother? Hiro exclaimed in awe. Nobody in the team knew much about Endo. He was one of those few players in Ukami Elementary School's team who was very secretive about his information. He didn't talk much outside the field and mostly preferred to stay alone. Since he was transferred to Ukami Elementary School the same year as Hiro joined Ukami Elementary School, nobody knew much about him. 
Yeah, he studies at Rondon Elementary School and he plays for the Rondon Elementary School's team. If you don't mind me asking about his name, can you tell me his name? Hiro politely asked for the name of Endo's brother. Don't tell anyone about it. His name is Kurosawa Taki. Huh, Kurosawa Taki. How? Hiro's eyes widened in shock. He couldn't believe that Kurosawa Taki was Endo's brother. He was at a loss of words. But your last name doesn't even match with each other. Unable to believe that Kurosawa Taki was his little brother, he bewilderingly questioned him. Yeah, that's because we're not blood related. Endo then began to tell him about the relationship he had with Kurosawa Taki. Taki and Endo were originally orphans who stayed at the same orphanage. Endo was abandoned by his parents before he could even remember and Taki lost his parents in a car accident. Having been born from an illicit relationship between two young couples, he was abandoned by his parents in front of a orphanage before he could even remember. He spent most of his years at orphanage, until someone adopted him. During his time at the orphanage, he met Taki when he was about six years of age. Taki was only two years old when he was brought at the orphanage by his relatives after the death of his parents in car accident. Even though he had relatives who could take care of him, none of his relatives wanted to take care of him and thus they decided to send him to the orphanage. That's how Taki ended up at the orphanage. When Taki was two years of age and Endo was six years old, Endo met him for the first time. Taki was still a young child who hadn't even stopped drinking mother's milk. And the orphanage lacked the required personnel to look after every kids in the orphanage. Having been grown up in the orphanage, Endo used to often help the caretakers with their jobs and take care of the kids even though he himself was a kid. Taki being one of the youngest in the orphanage required a lot of attention. The caretakers of the orphanage couldn't attend to him all the time as they would need to take care of other kids as well. At that time Endo stepped forward to take care of. Taki and took care of him like his own younger brother. He fetched him milk, kept him entertained and even sang lullaby to him. Every time when Taki used to cry, Endo would immediately rush towards the caretaker to inform them about his condition. That's how both of them grew close to each other. That's what Endo believed. For almost two years Endo took care of Taki in the orphanage. And suddenly on one faithful day when Taki was about to turn four years old, he was adopted by some well-to-do family. And after almost a year of Taki's adoption, Endo was adopted by a middle-class family as well. But after that adoption, Endo never saw Taki again. Until he caught a sight of him, once again in the squad of Rondon Elementary School during the opening ceremony of the prefectural tournaments. I'm really sorry about that Endo-senpei. Hiro began to apologize. No, no you don't have to be sorry. I'm sure he doesn't even recognize me now. So it's alright, Endo exclaimed while faking his smile. It had almost been one year since he last witnessed the sight of Taki. And he wasn't even sure if Taki would even remember him or not. Chapter 32 Champion vs Challenger After hearing that shocking revelation from Endo, Hiro was at loss of words. And even though he could feel the suffering of Endo, he couldn't console him. He wondered how a kid of that age was holding so much emotions within him. Even so, he couldn't just sit by and watch him grieve. He needed to do something to cheer him. He then began to make futile attempts to cheer him. I'm sure everything will turn out fine. And aren't you glad that he's doing really well? Hiro exclaimed while trying to console him. I hope so. Endo frowned. Don't worry about it. You'll get to reunite with your brother. And I'm sure everything will turn out fine. Hiro exclaimed with a smile on his face. Endo hesitatingly took a peek at Hiro's face. There was a smile on his face and he could feel that Hiro was genuinely worried about him. Upon seeing the gentle smile on his face, he felt a little better. Yeah, everything will turn out fine. He mumbled and revealed a warm smile. April 2, 2015, Pokari Sweat Stadium, Tokushima, Japan. Crowds of spectators were flocking towards the stadium. And a diverse group of people ranging from kids to elderly people were walking towards the stadium with cheerful smile on their faces. Welcome everyone to the final of this year's prefectural tournament of Tokushima Prefecture. Today we'll be witnessing the face-off of Ukami Elementary School and Rondon Elementary School. It's a match between previous year's winner and a new challenger. For past few years Rondon Elementary School have been dominating the prefectural tournament. And only Karasuno Elementary School have come close to challenging them for the past few years. But will things change now? Ukami Elementary School have built a really strong team which has even managed to defeat the mighty Karasuno Elementary School and they are eyeing towards the throne of the prefectural tournament. Will we witness a change in the history today? Or will Rondon Elementary School defend their title? Woohoo! 
While the commentator was commentating, suddenly the crowd burst out in cheers. Players began to walk out from the tunnel. Players of Rondon Elementary School made their appearance dressed in white jerseys. Walking side by side were the players of Ukami Elementary School dressed in black jersey. It was a battle of black and white. It was a battle between the champions and the challengers. Usually only the nationals would be broadcasted in the TV channels but due to the immense popularity of Hero, the local news channel were stationed in the stadium to broadcast the match live in there. Channel. There's sure a lot of people in the stand today. Hero mumbled in awe upon witnessing the huge number of spectators in the stand. The final match was being held at Pokari Sweat Stadium, the home of Tokushima Vortis Football Club. Tokushima Vortis Football Club was one of the professional team which played in the J2 of Japanese Football League. Even though it played in the second tier of Japanese League, it had a huge fan following and moreover it contained a large football stadium. While Hiro was searching for his parents in the crowd, he found Akashi acting weird. He was looking at the stadium from the whole of his hands which he shaped like a binoculars. What are you doing? Hiro questioned, contorting his face. Shish, I'm looking for the scouts. Akashi replied while looking at the stands. Why would there be scouts in a kid's game? Since it's a stadium of a professional team, there might be scouts of the team. Now don't disturb me. Akashi tried to shrug him off. Akashi wasn't totally wrong about his statement. After all Tokushima Vortis was a professional team which had a youth team, so it wasn't totally off the chart for the scouts of Tokushima Vortis to be present in the stadium. He then looked around him and found his teammates acting weird for some reasons. Kuro, Kuan and Atsuka, the three of them were lying in the ground with their face facing downwards. What are you all doing? He bewilderingly questioned. UWU tilde the grass is so soft. I can feel the texture of these finely trimmed grass. Kuan expressed himself. For most of them, it was their first time playing in a stadium of professional team. Even for Hiro, it was his first time playing in a professional team stadium. In his previous life, he never got to play in a professional team stadium. Just then as Endo made his way towards them with his face contorted in disdain. What's the matter Endo Senpei? Hiro questioned upon witnessing his sad face. We lost the toss. Endo sighed. Ha ha ha, you scared us for no reason. And we thought something serious might have happened. The players of Ukami Elementary School burst out in laughter upon listening to Endo's words. Don't worry about the loss in toss, Endo Senpei. We've got a game to win, right boys? Hiro raised his voice. Yeah, let's crush them and win the title guys. Akashi yelled, let's go pack. We've got a game to win. Saying such, all of them walked towards the center half of the pitch to shake the hands of their opponents. After that discussion, their eyes were glowing with confidence. Just as they were shaking the hands of their opponents, Hiro's eyes landed on Taki and Endo. While everybody already finished shaking each other's hands, they were still holding each other's hands. Taki was mumbling something but he couldn't hear him. While they were conversing with each other, Endo looked extremely sad. Let's go Hiro, Akashi called out for him. While keeping his gaze fixated at the sight of Endo and Taki, he began to step back. As they began to position themselves Kuro yelled. Hurry up Endo. Endo hurriedly ran towards the goalpost. They were playing in a 4-4-3 formation with Sato and Kuro playing as winger. Hiro was playing a false 9 and there wasn't much change in their squad except the only the change being Akashi playing as the starting center back instead of Kento. Beep. The referee blew his whistle, commencing the start of the match. Since they had lost the toss, Rondon Elementary School chose to pick the goalpost and they were forced to start the kickoff. Hiro passed the ball back towards Rin. Rondon Elementary School relied on a traditional 4-1-3-2 formation. They had a counter-attacking philosophy and relied more on their defense. Because of their strong defense, they had gained themselves a nickname of Iron Fortress. And although they relied more on their defense, their offense was extremely deadly as well because of their ability to switch between defense and offense. They were a team to be feared. Since they had learned about their playstyle, the players of Ukami Elementary School didn't charge forward recklessly. They tried to break the opponent's formation as much as they could. Just like them, the players of Rondon Elementary School have prepared enough against them as well. They didn't charge in recklessly and approached them calmly without breaking their formation. And once again they had to rely on Hero's dribbling to break their defense. Hero began to dribble the ball forward. And just like in the game with Karasuno Elementary School, the defenders of Rondon Elementary School surrounded him instantly. But unlike the defenders of Karasuno Elementary School who charged towards him recklessly, 
The defenders of Rondon Elementary stayed in their position and kept on observing him, leaving him no space to take the ball forward. TCH. Hero clicked his tongue and passed the ball backwards. They were fully aware of his dribbling abilities and were wary of him. For almost 15th minute of the game, the ball stayed glued in the feet of the players of Ukami Elementary School. And at the 16th minute of the game, he noticed a space between their defense. Making use of the space, he began to charge the ball forward with the help of Sato and Kuro. With swift 1-2 passes, they broke free through the defense of Rondon Elementary School. With only a defender and a keeper blocking his course, he found himself exactly at the periphery of the penalty zone. Targeting the top left corner of the pitch, he kicked the ball towards the post from outside the box. The ball touched the tip of Taki's gloves and rolled towards the left side. Loose ball. Just as he was about to shout, something confused him. Surprisingly there was already a defender positioned at the left side of their defensive half. The sight of that defender confused him. That defender quickly played the ball forward and Rondon Elementary School started to counterattack. Get back, get back, he yelled as the defender played the ball forward. Because of the earlier attack, most of their players were in front of the center line. And so were the offensive players of Rondon Elementary School. The two offensive players of Rondon Elementary School didn't participate in the defense even though it was threatening for them. As if they were ordered to stay at the center line no matter the outcome, they didn't drop back to defend even when they were on the verge of conceding a goal. Chapter 33 Ties to Yakuza While the players of Ukami Elementary School were falling back, the forwards of Rondon Elementary School began to charge the ball forward. The two forwards on their top were extremely agile. With swift 1-2 passes they tore the defense of Ukami Elementary School-like pair of sharp scissor blade cutting through the paper. The fast-paced counterattack intrigued the crowds as they stood up from their seat and watched them tear the defense of Ukami Elementary School. With only Akashi and Endo remaining in the backline, the forwards of Rondon Elementary School were already in front of the penalty box. Akashi tried to maintain his composure as much as he can and didn't charge forward recklessly. What will it be? Will he pass or will he dribble past me or will he shoot? Akashi began to wonder as droplets of sweat began to wail down his sweaty face. Just then he caught a glimpse of the foot of the player with the ball. Thinking that he'd pass the ball, Akashi jumped forward to block his pass course. But contrary to his expectations, the forward faked the pass and dribble past him. Endo was the only one standing between that forward and the goal. He was their last ray of hope. Come forward Endo Senpei, Hiro desperately shouted. But Endo hesitated to come forward and started to panic instead of keeping his cool like he used to do. Since earlier moment, he seemed out of place. As if something was gnawing on him, he seemed different than his usual self. The forward of Rondon Elementary School took full advantage of his hesitation. As he was glued to his post, the forward of Rondon Elementary School had a lot of space to shoot and score. Taking advantage of those spaces, the forward shot the ball and scored a goal against Ukami Elementary School. Go a a a a l l l l l l l l. Rondon Elementary School have opened up the score sheet. The champions have once again demonstrated why other teams need to fear them. The crowds burst out in cheers as Rondon Elementary School took the lead against Ukami Elementary School in the 17th minute of the match. What's the matter with you, Endo Senpei? You're acting weird. You should have been able to make that save. Akashi began to complain. He had full confidence on Endo to prevent the goal. But contrary to his expectations, Endo conceded a goal. He was frozen at his place. It's all right. It's all right Akashi. Hiro intoned while pulling back a fuming Akashi. Let's give our best Endo Senpei. As he was returning to his position, he whispered. Endo didn't reply anything and continued to remain unresponsive. Beep. The referee blew the whistle, commencing the continuation of the match. As time progressed, the playstyle of the Rondon Elementary School remained the same. However their attacks started to become even more lethal. The score remained 1-0 for the entirety of the first half. While the keeper of Rondon Elementary School was making unbelievable saves and preventing their goals. Endo on the other hand looked out of place. Even after that first goal, there were many instances when they were on the verge of conceding goals. If not for their defense, they might have already conceded more than three goals in the first half alone. While exiting the pitch, nobody spoke anything. The tension on the team was evident from the faces of the players. Bam! Unable to control his anger, Akashi banged the locker while they were resting in the locker room, awaiting for coach's guidance. What's the matter with you Endo Senpei? If you don't want to play then just substitute for Mark Senpei. He's more than ready to play. 
But if you want to play then play as if your life depends on it. Akashi burst out in fury and began to cuss Endo. Hiro and Kuan tried to hold him back but he was simply too strong for them to restrain. While Akashi was cussing at Endo, nobody spoke anything. After all Akashi was stating the fact. Akashi who grew up in a family of Yakuza feared nobody. While his father ran a business, his grandfather used to be one of the boss of a local Yakuza gang. Even though his grandfather had retired from his position because of his old age and because of the stricter laws, his Yakuza friends from his younger days still used to hang out with him at his place. Akashi who got along with his grandfather often accompanied him at the time of meeting. And whenever those old fogies met each other, they would cheerfully tell their heroic deeds they performed when they were younger. Akashi who was fascinated by those stories was extremely influenced by their stories and wanted to become like them. His love for football also started because of his grandfather as well. While those old fogies were yakuza's who didn't give a damn about life, they would often gather together to bet in football matches. And because of those betting habits, they'd often spectate the match from the stands. And as time progressed, those habits changed into love for football. Kuro Senpei help. Hiro pleaded while gesturing Kuro to help them restrain Akashi. Even though Akashi was younger compared to Endo, he was much more taller and bulkier than the rest of the players. And his fierce temper was no joke. He'd even punch a 13-year-old in anger. He was an idiot with immense raw strength. Okay that's all Akashi, coach Miura intoned as he made his way towards the locker room. Hearing the voice of the coach, Akashi quiet down and tried to break free from their clutches. Fearing that he might lunge at Endo if left alone, the two of them increased their grip and restrained him even more tightly. Leave me, Akashi rose his voice and tried to shake them off. Leave him, Coach Miura exclaimed. Hearing the words of Coach Miura, both of them let go of him. Upon getting free from their clutches, Akashi walked towards the bench and sat down with a wet towel on top of his face. Okay, now that everyone's clammed down, I'd like to say something. I know that first half have been tough for you all and it's not going as expected. But I want you all to know that the game has not ended and we still have time to turn around the match. While giving a pep talk, Coach Miura gestured assistant coach Honda to bring him the whiteboard. He then began to scribble something on the whiteboard. Look here, the reason why we aren't able to score a goal against them is because they're guiding us to the place where they want us to take the ball. They're manipulating our play by creating fake spaces. The spaces where we cannot score a goal. They're intentionally leading us. Coach Miura briefed them about the flaws. Having said that, he adjourned the meeting. And as the players were leaving towards the pitch with a newfound confidence, he stopped Endo. You know why I'm not pulling you out of the game? Coach Miura mumbled. Endo continued to remain silent. Endo looked me in the eyes. He yelled. Endo hesitatingly lifted his head up to meet his eyes. I'm not pulling you out of the game because I believe in you Endo. So it's all up to you whether you want to prove me right or wrong. Coach Miura exclaimed while looking him in the eyes. Endo remained speechless, but he was feeling guilty as well. Do you understand Endo? Endo silently nodded his head. Go and give your best. I thought that the coach would substitute his keeper for making those lethal mistakes. But what's this? He hasn't dropped him out of the team. Is there something going on his head? Is this a part of their strategy? Or is it a plain act of ignorance? Whatever it is, we'll only know after the end of the match. Beep. With the blow of the whistle of referee, the second half of the match commenced in full swing. Neither of the team made any changes and the game continued with the same players from the beginning. With no tactical changes in the second half, Rondon Elementary School continued to play as they did in the first half. Intentionally leaving a gap for the players of Ukami Elementary School to exploit, they continued to mislead them. And as such at 43rd minute of the game, the ball was with Hiro. As he was dribbling the ball forward, he noticed a gap in the left side of the player in front. Having heard of their tactics, he did as they wanted. He dribbled towards left to the gap they intentionally left open. However instead of making a shot from the left side, he cut in even more deep and began to dribble the ball towards the post. Unlike Endo, Taki came forward to block his shoot course. Covering a large space, he stood tall in front of him. As if he was trying to intimidate him, he slowed down his pace and approached the post slowly. And just as Hiro was about to make a shot Taki stretched his arms wide. But the ball went down between his legs while he was focusing on his sides. Go a a a a l l l l l l l l Chapter 34 Costly Mistake At 43rd minute of the game, Hiro tied the score with his incredible goal. 
All of his teammates ran towards him to celebrate the goal as he scored the goal and tied the game. After scoring the goal, Hiro ran towards the sidelines to celebrate his goal and lifted his left arm forward. He then folded the fingers of his right hand while sticking out his middle finger and index finger. And as he stretched his left hand forward, he lowered his head and positioned the fingers of his right hand at his temple. He announced the supporters his arrival by imitating teleportation gesture of Son Goku. Just then his teammates caught up to him and jumped all over him. The supporters of Ukami Elementary School very much enjoyed his celebration and burst out in praises while the supporters of Rondon Elementary School were fuming in anger. The players of Rondon Elementary School expressed the same feeling as their supporters, they were furious. Pulling off a comeback in the 43rd minute of the game, the coach of Ukami Elementary School was overjoyed with happiness and so were the supporters of Ukami Elementary School. While everybody were celebrating Hiro's goal, Endo pitifully observed his teammates from the backline. He couldn't bring himself to celebrate the goal. While they were celebrating his goal, the coach of Rondon Elementary School was preparing to make a player change. Beep. The first substitution of the game has come from Rondon Elementary School. They are substituting one of their midfielder for a defender. The game continued with a score of 1-1. As the match continued after that 43rd minute equalizer from Ukami Elementary School, Rondon Elementary School substituted their midfielder for a defender. Their already stuffed defensive line was even more packed with the addition of a new defender. After that equalizer, the defenders of Rondon Elementary School didn't give them any opportunity to score another goal. They completely shut them down every time they went on the offense. Because of the increase in the number of defenders, they were having difficulties in moving the ball forward. While the two forwards of Rondon Elementary School didn't participate in the defense, they still stayed behind the center line preying on any loose balls, which in turn created another threat for them to pass the ball backwards. The game was neck to neck with both sides unwilling to change their strategy. As if the coach of Rondon Elementary School had instructed them to stand their grounds until the final whistle of the match, they maintained their positions and cleared every potential ball that could have ended up as a goal. The players of Ukami Elementary School were starting to show signs of frustration and fatigue. Players of Rondon Elementary School were in similar situation as well, they were panting heavily. Every time when they tried to take the ball forward, the defenders of Rondon Elementary School would somehow snatch the ball away from them. But even so they wouldn't charge the ball forward even after snatching the ball away from them. Instead they would clear it away. As if their only purpose was to waste time and take the game into penalty shootout, they played very defensively. Just then at 57th minute of the game, Kosei Atsuka the defensive midfielder of Ukami Elementary School made a costly mistake. While he was preparing to pass the ball towards Akashi, he didn't notice the presence of the forward of Rondon Elementary School behind his back. Garo Sato the forward of Rondon Elementary School had been eyeing at the ball while hiding in his blind spot. Oh, that doesn't look good. A dangerous mistake from Atsuka has given the opportunity for the players of Rondon Elementary School to steal the victory. Due to lack of power, the ball from Atsuka stopped midway before it could reach Akashi. Garo Sato one of the forward of the Rondon Elementary School was already chasing the ball. He had been hiding his presence since earlier while awaiting for Atsuka to make some mistakes. Since Atsuka remained at the center half most of the time and played as a defensive midfielder, he played as a bridge between the defense and offense of the Ukami Elementary School. Arg, shit, Akashi cussed in frustration as the ball stopped midway before reaching him. He ran towards the ball. But before he could reach the ball, Garo Sato the forward of Rondon Elementary School who was already chasing the ball even before it was released from Atsuka reached the ball. TCHO great. Akashi clicked his tongue as he stopped midway. He then began to analyze his options. Once again he found himself in the same situation as he did previously. He was in a 1v1 situation with Garo Sato once again. The only difference being the lack of support for Garo this time around. With only Endo behind his back, he couldn't trust him to make the save because of his deteriorating performance. Since the start of the match, Endo was performing very badly. Garo Sato while dribbling the ball towards him, glared at him. Akashi glared him back but didn't charge forward recklessly. He maintained his position and waited patiently for Garo to make his moves. Having no support, there was only one option available for Garo Sato. He could only dribble the ball forward if he wanted to score. And he did exactly the same, he tried to dribble past Akashi. As he approached closer to Akashi, he kicked the ball forward. He was trying to dribble past him while making use of his explosive pace. 
Because of his explosive pace, he shook off Akashi easily and left him behind in dust. After dribbling past Akashi, he approached the penalty area, and as he was stretching his legs to shoot the ball, a leg came flying towards him from behind him and swept him on the floor. Beep, the leg belonged to none other than Akashi. Unable to reach him, he performed a sliding tackle at Garo Sato from behind him to prevent him from scoring a goal. That intentional tackle from Akashi prevented Garo from making the shot and also prevented the immediate threat. However it couldn't prevent him from getting dejected from the game. As Garo Sato fell down tumbling on the ground after getting hit by Akashi's harsh tackle, the referee stopped the play. Everybody could see that the tackle made by Akashi was intentional. And so did the referee. He witnessed his intentional tackle and immediately took a red card out of his pocket. Akashi looked frustrated but he didn't complain about the decision of referee. He peacefully accepted the referee's decision and began to head out of the field. Sob, sob, Akashi you, Hiro tried to interact with Akashi. I leave the rest to you guys. Akashi's voice shook as he left the pitch. Even though he tried to hide his tears and act tough, Hiro could notice the tears in his eyes. And so did Endo. He also noticed the tears on Akashi's face. What am I doing? If not for me, he wouldn't have performed that tackle. My poor performance is costing my team the game. Endo comprehended. With that red card, the referee had awarded Rondon Elementary School a penalty. And a penalty at that moment of game would have totally altered the outcome of the game. With only two minutes remaining on the clock that penalty was as crucial for Rondon Elementary School as last drop of water for a survivor in the desert. It's not your fault. You did well. Coach Miura consoled Akashi as he walked outside the pitch. While everybody were questioning about the penalty taker for Rondon Elementary School, Garo Sato stood up and began to walk towards the ball. Garo Sato hadn't sustained any serious injury from that tackle. So it'll still be him, Hiro mumbled. While everybody positioned themselves behind the penalty box, the referee blew the whistle. Garo stared at the ball placed in front of him and started to make his run. With slow and steady steps, he made his run towards the ball as if he was trying to intimidate the keeper in front of him. Endo who was determined to correct his mistakes looked very focused. Peeking at Endo's eyes, Hiro felt something different about him. He then signaled Kuan to run towards the post as soon as Garo made his shot. Just when Garo began to make his run, Hiro started to run forward. One of the defender of Rondon Elementary School caught a sight of Hiro making the run and began to fall back as well. Garo slammed the ball straight in the bottom left corner of the post. Endo leapt towards the direction of the ball and barely managed to touch the ball. Endo made a brilliant save and stopped Garo's penalty. As the ball touched his gloves, it bounced forward. The players of Rondon Elementary School began to chase after the ball. But it was Kuan who reached the ball before anyone else could. Just as gestured by Hiro, he had begun to run towards the post the moment Garo made his run. And luckily the ball bounced towards him as well. Go Hiro! He yelled as he shot the ball towards Hiro who was already running forward. Chapter 35 I am here. Kuan sent the ball flying towards Hiro. Since all the players of Rondon Elementary School except the keeper were gathered for the penalty kick at the defensive half of Ukami Elementary School, there was nobody present in the backline of Rondon Elementary School except the keeper. As Hiro was making his run, the ball flew past him over his head. It landed exactly at the kickoff spot and bounced a little further towards the edge of the circle. He was the first one to reach the ball. Seeing no one in front of his sight, he began to dribble the ball forward. Kurosawa Taki, the keeper of Rondon Elementary School came out of his box to defend against him. Huff, huff, Hiro began to pant heavily. Because of the intensity of the game, he had exhausted himself from running all over the field. There's a chance for Ukami Elementary School as Hiro has taken control of the ball. Between him and the goal, only the keeper stands in front of him. However he seems extremely exhausted. He had been running a lot in this match. In fact nobody has covered as much distance as he did in this entire match. No wonder he looks exhausted. Will he be able to last until the end? Or will he burn out himself and collapse? As he tried to dribble the ball forward, he felt excruciating pain in his legs. His leg muscles started to convulse. And every step he took felt like walking on a path full of thorns. It was clear, he was exhausted. System activate skill perseverance, Hero mumbled. Perseverance activated. For 15 minutes, unlimited stamina has been granted to the host and the effect of exhaustion will be negated for the entirety of the activation of the skill. Just as the system activated the skill perseverance, all his fatigue started to fade away. He felt rejuvenated and he began to overflow with vitality. 
The tired muscle fibers in his body started to recover and the soreness he felt in his joints faded away. As if he was put under anesthesia, his body became numb to exhaustion. It's my first time activating this skill, but the effect is on another level. I don't feel any fatigue and it feels like I can run another 15 to 20 miles. He thought inside his head. However during the time he was comprehending the effects of the skill, the defender of Rondon Elementary School had caught up to him. He was just behind his heels. Noticing Suzuki Atsumi, the defender of Rondon Elementary School who was tailing him, approaching him from behind him, he increased his pace and tried to distance himself from him. He thought of kicking the ball forward and chasing after it. But the keeper of Rondon Elementary School was already coming out of his box and kicking the ball too hard would have meant trouble for him as the keeper would have cleared it away. He couldn't make full use of his pace with the ball in his feet. Dribbling with the ball meant giving up part of his speed. He kicked the ball with just enough force that he could reach it before anyone else could. Just as he kicked the ball with the precise amount of force for him to reach the ball and was preparing to make a run. Suzuki Atsumi, the defender of Rondon Elementary School performed a sliding tackle on him. He didn't even conceal his intention to foul him. Even after the ball was released from his legs, Suzuki Atsumi still performed a sliding tackle on him from behind him. He wasn't even aiming at the ball and he was clearly aiming at his feet. Upon getting hit, Hiro fell down tumbling on the ground. Beep. That was a nasty tackle from the number 3 of Rondon Elementary School. He was clearly aiming at his feet. Now show me how you'll run. Atsumi scorned while Hiro was lying on the ground holding his ankle, huffing in pain. Kuro came running towards him and pushed Atsumi. Atsumi was sent flying as he landed on his butt a few distance away from his original place. Other players followed soon and a fight broke out between the players of Ukami Elementary School and Rondon Elementary School. The field became extremely chaotic within seconds. Security personnel fled towards the stadium to stop those kids from rioting. Just few minutes before the final whistle, the match between Ukami Elementary School and Rondon Elementary School took a chaotic turn. Never have I ever seen such a heated match between kids. The players are pushing each other and even the security personnels are forced to intervene. It took a while to separate all those players. Since a lot of players were involved in the riot, referee was forced to bring out his cards on multiple players. He gave Kuro a yellow card for his offense on Atsumi. He showed a yellow card on Taki who was the second person to arrive at the place where Atsumi fouled Hiro after Kuro. A total of five yellow cards were shown to different players from both sides. Two for Ukami Elementary School players and three for Rondon Elementary School players. And finally the man who was involved directly in the foul, Suzuki Atsumi. He was shown a straight red card and was dejected from the match. A free kick was rewarded to Ukami Elementary School at the spot where the foul was committed on Hiro. A certain distance away from the circle. Since the free kick was awarded at a distance pretty far away from the goalpost, nobody expected Ukami Elementary School to score the goal. However the expression on the faces of players of Ukami Elementary School said otherwise. They knew what Hiro was capable of. And since nobody except them had witnessed his free kicks, they were the only ones who believed in that set play. After separating both sides and handing out cards to the respective players who were involved in the riot, the referee sprayed the vanishing spray at the spot where the foul was committed. After that nasty tackle, a free kick has been awarded to Ukami Elementary School. The distance between the goal and the ball is quite far away. So I doubt anybody in their right mind would try to make a shot from that distance. They'll probably pass the ball towards the players standing at the penalty box. I wonder who'll be taking this free kick from Ukami Elementary School. I haven't seen them perform any free kick in this whole tournament. As the commentator finished his statement, Hiro walked towards the place where the referee had marked with his vanishing spray. He placed the ball at the marked spot and adjusted the ball while looking at the post in front of him. Four players of Rondon Elementary School formed a massive wall in front of him while the others were behind the wall, marking the players of Ukami Elementary School. Almost every player of Ukami Elementary School stood in front of the goalpost awaiting for the ball. Hiro took about seven steps back and paused. As he paused, he stood straight in front of the ball, glaring at the keeper of Rondon Elementary School. System activate skill focuses. System activate talent free kick of Roberto Carlos. He activated every skill he possessed. He didn't want to make any mistakes. That free kick was probably the last set piece of the game. With all his skills activated, he entered the flow. The effect of Roberto Carlos's free kick magnified with the activation of the skill focus. He could see the point in the ball where he could kick the ball to magnify its power and curve. 
Beep. As the referee blew his whistle, he took a final glance at the ball and began to run towards the ball. Everybody looked at him with anticipation. Unknowingly the spectators in the stands stood up to watch him perform the shot. The whole stadium went silent as he made his run towards the ball. Step, step, bam, he stretched his right leg while bending at an angle of 45 degree and shot the ball with as much force as he can. The ball flew like a missile towards the post. At first it seemed like it would go wide. However due to spin on the ball it curved inside towards the post as it accelerated. Unlike Endo, Taki was able to react to his shot. Taki leapt towards the direction of the ball while stretching his arms. As he stretched his arms, it grazed the tip of his fingers. G O A A A A A L L L L L L L. Thud, as his body slammed on the ground, he felt a faint sensation of the ball. But even though he touched the ball with the tip of his fingers, he couldn't save the ball. It was simply too powerful for him to block with his fingers. The ball went past him and effortlessly entered the net. The silent crowd burst out in cheers as he scored that unbelievable goal from such a distance. Woohoo! Yeah, with that goal from Hero, the game was as good as over. There was simply no turning back at that point of the game. With only a minute left on the clock, Ukami Elementary School had secured their victory with that powerful goal from Hero. Chapter 36 Flickering Ray of Hope As he scored that goal, Hero ran towards the stands where the supporters of Ukami Elementary School were seated and celebrated his goal while raising his fist up in the sky and yelling at the top of his voice, Woo! Yeah, Woo! The crowd resonated to his victory chant and parroted after him. The whole atmosphere of the stadium lit up as he scored that goal. The game had completely changed after that goal. What are you people doing? Only if you people have jumped, that goal could have been prevented. Just what the hell were you thinking, standing in front of the ball like a mannequin? You're the walls that's supposed to block the ball. The calm and composed goalkeeper of Rondon Elementary School who was quiet during whole match burst out in fury and lashed out at his teammates for failing to block the ball. His face turned as red as tomato in anger. There was still a minute left before the final whistle of the match. With a minute and additional time remaining, the outcome of the game had yet to be decided. Finally Ukami Elementary School have decided to use their substitution cards. It seems like they'll be subbing three players at once. And all three of them happen to be offensive players. They're subbing their forward and midfielders for defenders. After they finished celebrating their goal, the game commenced with the whistle of the referee. They subbed Kurosaki Kuro and Sohei Sato, the wingers of the Ukami Elementary School for Yamazaki Kento and Daichi Kamada. And finally they subbed Asahi Kuon, the central midfielder of Ukami Elementary School for Ryaus Gran who played as a defensive midfielder. As the substituted players made their way towards the pitch, they parroted the instructions of the coach Miura to rest of the players. With those substitutions, they started to play in a formation of 6-3-1 with Hiro as the sole striker. They fortified their defense and were determined to defend their one-goal lead for the remaining minutes of the game. It was a do-or-die situation for Rondon Elementary School and they could no longer play defensively. Even though their team was packed with defensive players, the coach of Rondon Elementary School didn't substitute any players. He let the players in the field complete the match. The players of Rondon Elementary School pressed high and showered them with barrage of shots. They didn't give them any moment to rest. But after saving the previous penalty, something had changed in Endo. He put his life on the line and blocked every shot that made its way towards the post. The referee kept on looking at his watch and as the final minute of the game ended, he added four minutes extra. Witnessing their aggressive pressing gameplay, Hiro was forced to drop deep. Garo Sato, the forward of Rondon Elementary School became even more lethal as the clock ticked. At 63rd minute of the game with only few seconds remaining, he took the matter in his hands and began to dribble the ball all by himself. While dribbling forward with the ball, he encountered Ron on his way. Ron blocked his course with his massive body. Ron was a bit overweight and had a massive body. Garo performed a chop and dribble past him. Kento and Kamada followed after Ron. To cover for Ron's mistake both of them surrounded Garo. However they proved to be inferior against him, Garo performed two chops simultaneously with his both feet. He performed a chop with his right feet and dribbled past Kento. He then again performed another chop with his left foot and dribbled past Kamada. After breaking free from three players at once, he found himself in front of the D-box. Upon seeing Garo closing the distance towards the post, Endo started to rush forward. Upon seeing Endo coming forward and having no one on his support, he was left with only two options. Either he'd have to shoot or he'd have to dribble past Endo. 
If it were under any normal circumstances, he'd have picked the later option. But because of the pressure, he chose the first option. While he was stretching his right leg to shoot the ball, the referee glanced at his watch and was preparing to blow the whistle to announce the end of the game. Come on Garo, you can do it, the supporters of Rondon Elementary School chanted while looking at him with eyes full of expectation. He was their last ray of hope. As Endo was covering the entire floor, Garo decided to shoot the ball at the top. Corner because of short stature of Endo. He released the ball from his feet. With slight rotation in the ball, it curved towards top right corner of the goalpost. Endo jumped with as much force as he could muster and dived towards the ball while stretching his arms out. Even with his arms sticking out, he fell short because of his height. He couldn't reach the ball. The ball went past him. Slam. The ball hit the top right bar and went out of play. Beep. 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 The referee blew his whistle and ended the game. Woohoo. Hooray. Yahoo. The supporters of Ukami Elementary School burst out in cheers as the referee blew the final whistle of the game. Ukami Elementary School won the prefectural tournament by defeating the reigning champion, Rondon Elementary School in the final with a score of 2, 1 and booked themselves a spot in the regional tournaments. As the referee blew his whistle, the players of Rondon Elementary School threw themselves in the ground in a state of disappointment and exhaustion. Pain of losing the game overshadowed the pain they accumulated through fatigue. Players from the bench of Ukami Elementary School burst out in the field as their team won the prefectural tournament. Truly unbelievable, the challengers have come out victorious and have dethroned the previous champion of the Tokushima Prefecture. The team of Rondon Elementary School showed us a brilliant performance. However they still failed to win the match. They came totally prepared but Soccer Wizard was too much for them to handle. That winning goal from him was totally a piece of art which we may not witness from anyone else in the tournament. The game between the two teams concluded with the victory of Ukami Elementary School. And as they lined up for a last handshake, his gaze once again fell towards Endo and Taki. I guess you have really forgotten about me. But it's all right now. I'm glad that you are doing fine. Endo exclaimed calmly while showcasing a gentle smee on his face. Previously when they spoke with each other, Taki had denied the allegations of having met him. When Endo mentioned he was his little brother, Taki blatantly refused the allegations of having any kind of ties with him. That statement alone had broken Endo's heart into pieces. Taki continued to stare at him while holding his hands. Unable to hear any response from him, Endo began to walk away. And just as he was about to leave his sight, he heard something. Big Brother Endo from Children's Cottage Orphanage. You still remember me. You haven't forgotten about me. Endo turned back and gawked in disbelief. His brows raised in surprised arc, he was stunned to hear the name of the orphanage. Why are you pretending like you've forgotten about me? I'm not pretending, I just want to forget about everything from that time at the orphanage. Although I'm grateful for the orphanage and you, I want to live a normal life away from the orphanage. I don't want to remember anything related to the orphanage. And moreover I don't want to remember that I'm orphan. Taki intoned while looking at him with pained eyes. As if he was suffering from the fact that he was an orphan, he desperately wanted to erase his past. After his adoption, he had managed to successfully erase his past after cutting his ties with the orphanage. However the appearance of Endo, once again reopened his closed wounds. And thus he pretended to be unaware of Endo when Endo tried to converse with him. Even though Endo wanted to maintain his relationship with Taki, he decided to accept his feelings and bid him farewell. After hearing his inner feelings, Endo accepted his feelings and raised his hands towards Taki to offer him one last handshake. I understand your feelings. I'm just glad that you are doing well. And I guess it might be our last meeting as brothers with each other. So will you allow me to address you as little brother for one last time? Taki nodded his head and took his hands. Please take care of yourself and shine brilliantly my little brother. I'll always be praying for your success. Endo exclaimed softly with a gentle smile on his face. And as he was about to depart, he pulled him closer and hugged him. Taki's heart was filled with the warmth of Endo's genuine smile. However he couldn't express his feelings and remained frozen at his place. With a heavy heart, Taki observed Endo leaving his sight and vanishing into the crowd of players who were celebrating their victory. Chapter 37 Champions After sorting things out with Taki, Endo walked towards his teammates who were jumping and humming in joy with a smile on his face. Did you sort things out with him? Hiro approached him and questioned him upon witnessing his smiling face. Yeah, we had a peaceful conversation with each other. Endo smirked. I'm glad you sorted things between yourselves. Now let's join the party. 
Hiro didn't want to pry more on his personal information and thus he ended his sentence without saying much. What are you two doing over there? Hurry up, the award ceremony is about to begin. Honda San who was celebrating the victory with the players called out for them. Champions tilde champions tilde. His teammates were gathered in a circle and celebrating their victory over Rondon Elementary School. Congratulations Ukami Elementary School for becoming the champion of Tokushima Prefecture. And with this match the prefectural tournament has come to an end. With this victory they have booked themselves a spot in the regional tournaments which will be held a week from today. They'll be up against the winner of Kagawa, Ehime and Kochi Prefectures. Now let us honor our champions. For that I'd like to request Mayor Yamada to come up to the stage. Suddenly an obese old man with a silver arched mustache on his face, dressed in a black suit and leather shoes, made his way towards the pitch from the tunnel. He was the mayor of Tokushima Prefecture. As he made his way towards the pitch, the crowd burst out in cheers. While making his way towards the players, he waved his hands at the spectators. I'd also like to call the owner of Tokushima Vortis to help Mayor Yamada with the prize distribution. Another elderly person dressed in a navy blue suit with silver hair made his way towards the pitch. Seeing those two men, the crowds burst out in cheers. They were extremely excited to see the appearance of two famous personalities of Tokushima in the pitch. Those two men's exchanged handshakes with each other and greeted each other. After that they exchanged greetings with the coaches of the two teams. Congratulations Coach Miura, I must say you've gathered quite an impressive team. The owner of Tokushima Vortis complimented Coach Miura while shaking his hands. There was a hidden meaning behind his compliments. And Coach Miura quickly understood the meaning behind those praises. Indeed they're a bunch of talented kids that could play for Tokushima Vortis in the future. Coach Miura cheerfully accepted his compliments. If so I'll be holding on to your words Coach Miura. Ha 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 ha, the owner of Tokushima Vortis laughed heartily. After exchanging greetings with the respective coaches of two teams, two young lady who looked like they were still in their early 20s walked towards the field dressed in maroon blazer and skirt. With some light makeup in their faces, they were dolled up. Each carrying a box and a flag in their hands, they walked towards the center of the pitch, where the two famous personalities were gathered. As those ladies were walking towards the center of the pitch, Hiro heard a voice from behind him. Would you look at those Onekans big sisters, they're really pretty. Akashi smirked while looking at those young ladies. Huh, where did you learn those words? You shouldn't be saying those stuff at your age. Hiro exasperated. And where were you hiding all this time? Oh, I was at the locker room. I had to fetch something. Akashi dumbfoundedly replied. Weren't you pissed like a moment ago? So how come you're all smiles right now? Hiro intoned. And also what did you fetch from the locker room? This. Akashi pulled out a black colored banner from behind his back. He had tucked the banner inside his t-shirt. What's this? The banner confused Hiro. He then curiously took a peek at the banner. It was black colored banner with a figure of Oni, Japanese mythological demon, drawn in the middle. There were some words written above and below the Oni. The words read as such, fearless Oni gang. What? Akashi what's this? Hiro exasperated. It's a banner. Akashi replied dumbfoundedly. I can see that it's a banner. But why are bringing a gang's banner in the field? It's my grandfather's gang's banner. So I'm displaying it while we take photos. Ha ha ha, Akashi replied goofily. No, you can't bring this out. The tournament forbids players to display any kind of banners that doesn't belong to the school. Huh, I can't bring it with me. Yes you can't, so go put it away. Hiro exclaimed. Akashi frowned upon listening to Hiro's words. He contorted his face and started to walk towards the sidelines. Witnessing his sad face, Hiro felt sorry for him. You can take it out later when you'll get a chance to click photo with your grandpa. I'll help you take the pictures. Hiro mumbled. You'll do that for me. Thank you Hiro. Akashi's mood lightened up as he heard the consoling words of Hiro. The players of Rondon Elementary School started to exit the stadium with empty hands and bitter face. Only the champions of the tournament were awarded with a honor plaque and a honor flag. No medals or trophies were distributed for individual players. Since there were a lot of prefectures in Japan, the Japanese Football Association only provided the winning team with a honor plaque and a honor flag to reward them for their triumph. Individual players weren't awarded with anything for their achievements. Trophies, medals and certificates were only distributed for the national tournament. Now I'd like to call the coach and captain of Ukami Elementary School in front to receive the honor plaque from Mayor Yamada. At the center of the pitch, Mayor Yamada along with the owner of Tokushima Vortis and two other young ladies were gathered. 
It was a customary tradition for the winner to receive the honor plaque from the hands of the mayor of the respective city. Go captain, let's go coach. And as coach Miura and Endo made his way towards the center of the pitch where the award was distributed, everybody started to cheer them. The reporters who were at the stadium broadcasting the match rushed towards the center of the pitch to take a better view of the award ceremony. Mayor Yamada unboxed the box which contained the honor plaque and handed it to coach Miura. Owner Nakamura-san handed the honor flag to Endo. The honor flag was something that was provided to the school who had won the prefectural tournament. And unlike honor plaque that flag was passed like a baton. Only the winners would get to hold it for the rest of the year. And if they wanted to hold on to it they'd have to again win the prefectural tournament. And that particular honor flag belonged to Rondon Elementary School the year before. It was a symbol of pride. Even though every player in the Ukami Elementary School performed exceptionally, there was one player who stood out among the rest. Scoring a whopping 14 goals in the tournament, he was the highest scorer in the tournament. And even though he didn't get anything as a reward for his achievement because of the tournament protocol. I'd like everybody in the stand to wake up from their seats and give him a standing ovation. That's the least we can do to show respect to such an unbelievable talent. The commentator requested the crowds to give him a standing ovation for his achievement. And as he finished his sentence, everybody in the crowd stood up. Sniff, sniff. Somewhere in the crowd, a person was seen crying. With eyes full of tears, she held her mouth to cover her sniffing voice. All this people are standing for my little boy. Honey, am I dreaming? Sniff, sniff. Hiro's mother questioned Takashi with eyes full of tears. She couldn't hold back her tears upon seeing so many strangers showing respect to her son. Even though Takashi was on the verge of crying himself, he held his tears and acted tough. With his chest puffed, he proudly replied, No honey. It's not a dream. Our son have earned this respect through his actions and hard work. Witnessing such a massive crowd cheering and showing respect to her son, she got emotional and began to wept. It was his first time getting such an ethereal treatment. In his previous life, he was considered a failure. Let alone receiving a standing ovation, aside from the people close to him, he didn't even have a single fan who supported him. Witnessing such a large crowd giving him standing ovation, tears started to form in his eyes. The scene in front made him emotional. Why are you crying? Akashi inquired upon seeing his eyes full of tears. He gently wiped of the tears from his face and replied, I'm not crying. It's just I got dirt in my eyes. He tried to hide his tears. Yeah, yeah, it must be dirt. Akashi smirked. Chapter 38 Time Skip in Japanese Messi. April 9, 2019. Ajinomoto Stadium, Chofu, Tokyo. The final match between Ukami Elementary School and Tokyo Elementary School was about to take place in front of a packed stadium. It was a bright and sunny day. The sun was shining brilliantly in the clear blue sky. With few white clouds drifting across the clear blue sky, the average temperature of the day recorded a whopping 33 degrees Celsius. While making his way out of the tunnel, he raised his hands over his temple to shade his eyes from the bright rays of sun and casted a glance at the roaring spectators in the stand. Even in that hot weather, people were shouting and cheering at the top of their lungs. Sweat dripping through their face, their faces were all red. People cheering, drums rolling, the atmosphere around the stadium was extremely lively. Different people exhibiting different kinds of emotions, the crowd looked extremely energetic. Mesmerized by the energetic crowd in front of him, he stood frozen in his place. He couldn't take his gaze away from the crowd in front of him. Slam, finally you're right. Akashi came from behind him and playfully smacked him on his back. Indeed we're finally here, Hiro exclaimed while keeping his gaze fixated at the spectators in front. Even though he never got to participate in the nationals in his previous life, he had always had that dream of playing in the final of nationals once in his life. Unfortunately he could never fulfill that dream in his previous life. Let alone play in the finals of nationals, his team couldn't even qualify for national in his previous life. But since the finals of nationals were broadcasted nationwide, he used to watch the finals on television. And those energetic chants from the crowds and the emotion-packed dramatic game always mesmerized him in his previous life. I have been dreaming of this moment for so long. And that dream has finally come true. Hiro muttered in a muffled voice with a smile on his face. Huh, what did you say? Unable to hear his words clearly, Akashi bewildering inquired. Smack, nothing. I said we should win this tournament this year. And to do that we need to hurry up to the stage first. The last person to reach the circle is the cousin of Monkey. Ha ha ha. Hiro returned back the earlier smack and ran towards the pitch. 
Akashi chased after him. After failing four times previously, his dream of playing in the Nationals was starting to fade away. As depressing as those failures seemed, he didn't lose hope and persevered through the situation. Finally after persevering through those painful defeats, he made it to the finals of the Nationals in his fifth attempt. The match was taking place in the home ground of FC Tokyo, one of the teams belonging to the first division of Japanese professional leagues. Tokyo Elementary School being situated in Tokyo often played practice matches with the youth team of FC Tokyo. And thus Ajinomoto Stadium was like their second home ground. Even though the venue of the final match of nationals were chosen at random, somehow Tokyo Elementary School had gotten lucky that time around. Having an unfair advantage of playing in their own home ground, there were a lot of supporters of Tokyo Elementary School in the stands. An estimated number of 20,000 spectators had showed up for the match between Ukami Elementary School and Tokyo Elementary School. One of the reason behind the huge crowd was because of the appearance of a famous personality in the crowd. Ukami Elementary School being the winner from the Shikoku region and Tokyo Elementary School being the winner from Kanto region were facing against each other in the final of the tournament after defeating several other regional winners in the nationals. Hiro and Akashi were already in their fifth year of elementary school at that time around. And many of their senior players from the time when they were first years were already in middle school and high schools. Players like Endo, Kuro, Sato, Kuan and many others had already graduated elementary schools. Most of them were still playing football in middle school and high school teams, while few had given up on their dreams of becoming pro. It was totally reasonable for them to give up, after all that was a dream they dreamt while they were kids. After defeating Rondon Elementary School in their first year, they went on to play regional tournaments and came out victorious from their region. They then participated in the national tournament as a representative team from Shikoku region. Unfortunately their stay in nationals remained very short as they were knocked out in the very first round of nationals by Tokyo Elementary School. The same Tokyo Elementary School, they were facing in their fifth year. They not only eliminated them but they also humiliated them by winning the game with a score of 4-1. In their second year, they again managed to defeat the teams in their prefecture and came out victorious from Tokushima Prefecture. However in the regionals that year, a team from Ahime Prefecture managed to secure a narrow victory over them with a score of 2-1. The game was tied until the last minute. And just before the final whistle of the referee, a boy named Sora with curly hair and short stature managed to secure victory for his teams. He broke the dreadlock between the two teams by assisting a brilliant goal from the defensive half of their team towards the forward at the opponent's half. In their third year Karasuno Elementary School humbled them with a score of 3 zero in the finals of the prefectural tournament and sent them home empty-handed. Even though they were reaching the finals of the prefectural tournament consistently, they faced a major problem. They were lacking players with winning mentality. The new players which joined their team performed really well in group stages and knockouts. But almost in every big matches, they'd start to get anxious and end up ghosting the game. It's not like that they lacked talented players, it was more like they lacked the players with confidence. And even though Hiro carried his team on his back and performed exceptionally well in all those previously held tournaments, he couldn't lead his team to the ultimate victory all by himself. There was only so much he could do all by himself. The fourth year was no different as well, they were sent home by a team from Osaka in the semi-finals of the Nationals. During those four years, he scored more than 80 goals in the tournament. More than anyone had ever managed to achieve. Posting videos on YouTube once or twice a month, he garnered a massive fan following of 989k subscribers and earned a decent revenue to support his parents. His fame only continued to rise as he performed well in those tournaments. Some people in Japan even started to compare him with the likes of Messi, Ronaldo, Neymar, Cesc Fabregas and other generational talent. But while he was growing in Japan another brilliant individual was also showcasing his talent in the Japanese First Division League. Joining the famed youth development facility of the world, La Masia, at the age of 10, he had impressed the people of the world. Due to legal issues regarding his transfer, he had to return back to Japan in 2015. The same year Hiro's team won the prefectural and regional tournament and qualified for the nationals. At the age of 15 he was already playing senior level football in Japan. Many considered him the real jewel of Japanese football. Despite being younger than him, Hiro was often compared with that generational talent of Japan who was showcasing his skill in J1 League. The wonder kid of Japan also known as the Japanese Messi, Take Kubo, was impressing the people with his skillful dribble and gameplay. Asterisk 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 asterisk.
While the referee was preparing to start the match, Akashi came over to his side to whisper something in his ear. I heard that Take Kubo is here in the stadium. Akashi whispered, so what if he's here? Hiro shrugged him off. Even though he pretended like he didn't care about the presence of Kubo from outside, his inner voice said otherwise. The generational talent of our nation is here to see us play. He thought to himself, just like the people of Japan, he also admired Kubo in his previous life. Kubo was only eight years older than him but unlike him he had already performed in Europe. I wonder what he's doing here. He'll probably go on alone to Yokohama F Marinos in August. He's probably here right now because he plays for FC Tokyo right now. He thought to himself, is he feeling threatened about his title? Akashi chuckled. Why would he feel threatened? Hiro replied dumbfoundedly. Obviously because of our soccer wizard. Ha ha ha. Yeah, yeah. Now go back to your position. And don't blabber much. Watch over Ken. He's a little slow. Hiro instructed Akashi while pointing at the keeper of their team. What about Sasaki and Jen? Akashi questioned. There's no problem with Sasaki. However I'm worried about General. Even though he's not selfish anymore. But under pressure he starts to get anxious and his old habit starts to take hold of him. So I'm a little worried about him. Hiro exclaimed. His worries. Ken, Sasaki and Jen who were with them at the senior versus newbies match had made it into the first team after the departure of several senior players. Chapter 39 Ukami versus Tokyo I. While they were conversing with each other, the referee commanded them to assume their positions so that he could start the match. Let's just play like we practiced. Hiro mumbled as the referee commanded them to assume their positions. Yeah let's play like we practiced. Akashi nodded his head and started to run towards his position. Ah, before I go, there's something I want to tell you. He stopped midway and returned back towards him. Wondering what he wanted to tell, that sentence of Akashi made him curious. As Akashi approached closer towards him, he looked him in the eyes and smiled. Let's win this game partner. Hiro nodded his head and raised his fist forward. Yeah let's win. As they clashed their fist with each other and performed a fist bomb, Akashi fled towards his position. Hiro stood tall in front of the ball. He was already 4 feet 7 inches tall at the age of 10. With a sturdy lean body like that of Sergio Busquets, his body was well toned. Neither too bulky nor too skinny. He was dressed in the iconic black jersey of Ukami Elementary School with a captain armband tied around his left biceps. After the departure of Endo from the team, he had been appointed as the captain of the team by the coach of Ukami Elementary School. Beep. The referee blew the whistle and commenced the start of the match. Ukami Elementary School were playing in their traditional 4-4-2 diamond formation with Hiro as their attacking midfielder. They had opted for a balanced formation with emphasis on both defense and offense. On the other hand, Tokyo Elementary School were playing in an extremely offensive formation. They were playing in 3-4-3 formation. With three attackers and four midfielders, everybody could guess that they were going to play an offensive game. Hiro kicked the ball towards Sasaki, the fifth-year defensive midfielder of Ukami Elementary School. The opponent players of Tokyo Elementary School dressed in red and white jerseys began to scatter as the match commenced. Since they had already faced against them previously, they focused on stabilizing their position rather than pressing aggressively from the get-go. Thus they began to pass the ball among themselves. Even though Tokyo Elementary School played a very pressing game from the get-go, most of the time they ended up losing the control of the ball at the middle third of the pitch. While keeping the distance between them fairly close, the players of Ukami Elementary School stuck together in certain geometric patterns. Since Tokyo Elementary School relied more on their physicality rather than technicalities, the forwards of Tokyo Elementary School always tried to break free from the clutches of Ukami Elementary School by making use of their strength and agility. Every time when the opposing player of Tokyo Elementary School got the ball at the middle third of the pitch, the players of Ukami Elementary School immediately surrounded that player, leaving him no place to escape. While maintaining a certain distance away from each other, they kept pressuring the opposing player with the ball every time when an opponent player got the ball in the middle third of the pitch. In order to prevent making costly mistakes, only their forward chased after the ball in the defensive third of the opponent. At 27th minute of the match Kaminari Shinji, the left wing of Tokyo Elementary School got the ball in his feet at the left side of the half line. Nanahosi Ren, one of the newly recruited central midfielder of Ukami Elementary, chased after Kaminari Shinji as soon as he got the ball in his feet. Kaminari Shinji tried to make use of his agility to break free from Nanahosi Ren. But Nanahosi Ren didn't give him any opportunity to shake him off. 
Unable to shake him off via his agility, he thought of making use of his strength and tried to break free from Nanahosi Ren by pushing him aside. But Nanahosi Ren stood his ground and endured his shoulder pushes without breaking any sweat. Arg, why can't I budge him? Kaminari Shinji exasperated while trying to push Nanahosi Ren. Despite his lean body, Nanahosi Ren was as sturdy as mountain. The secret behind his sturdiness wasn't some kind of supernatural power, instead it all lied in his technique. Whenever Kaminari Shinji tried to push him, he'd intentionally increase the distance between his feet and push him before Shinji could come at him with full force. Both players equally matched in terms of speed and physicality, Kaminari Shinji couldn't shook off the mark of Nanahosi Ren. Unable to shake him off, Kaminari Shinji started to look for other options to break free from the marking of Nanahosi Ren. He looked at Mizuhara Aoi, the center forward of Tokyo Elementary School. But he was being marked by Sasaki, the defensive midfielder of Ukami Elementary School. He then again glanced behind him to see if anyone was available. But Hiro was already marking the player behind him. He then looked at his right side in hopes of finding one player free from the tight man marking of Ukami Elementary School. Sato Rin, another central midfielder of Ukami Elementary School was already occupying the space in the center of the pitch. He found himself secluded between four players of Ukami Elementary School. Sasaki in the front, Hiro in the back, Rin in the side and Ren in front of him, he was inside the triangular space created by the players of Ukami Elementary School. The more he tried to break free, the more he found himself trapped. Unable to break free, he started to get anxious. He then started to dribble the ball forward without thinking anything. After trying countless times, he finally managed to shook of the mark of Nanahosi Ren by tricking him with body feints. Ha ha ha, you thought that you could block me. Try again next time, he thought as he broke free from the mark of Nanahosi Ren. Just then Sasaki stole the ball from him. He had been so much occupied with Nanahosi Ren that he forgot about the existence of Sasaki in front of him. Sasaki gave away an excellent through pass to Hiro. Hiro without controlling the ball, passed the ball towards Ichija Ryu, the newly recruited first-year forward of Ukami Elementary School. The ball rolled towards the penalty box. The keeper of Tokyo Elementary School ran towards the ball to clear it away. Seeing the keeper approaching, Ichija Ryu tried to trick the goalkeeper by faking his shot. The goalkeeper of Tokyo Elementary School stretched his legs to make the stop. Just as the keeper stretched his legs, he tapped the ball lightly and made a turn. With the keeper lying on the ground, nothing stood before him in the goal. He tapped the ball lightly towards the goalpost. Suddenly the keeper of the Tokyo Elementary School stretched his arms and touched the ball. Even though the keeper was on the ground, he wasn't beaten yet. Due to that deflection of the keeper, the ball went out of bounds. Even though they failed to score a goal, the referee awarded them corner kick. It was already 32nd minute of the match. While the ball was in play, the referee had already added additional time. And even that additional time had already passed by the time they were awarded the corner kick at the end of the first half. Hiro walked towards the corner flag to take that corner kick. For that final, corner kick of first half, all of the players except the keeper of Ukami Elementary School gathered in front of the goalpost of Tokyo Elementary School. Hiro kicked the ball long and high. The ball was heading away from the goalpost. It was heading outside the penalty box. When everybody assumed that the ball would go out of bounds and referee would blow his whistle. A silhouette of a person became vivid at the, the place where the ball was going to land. That silhouette belonged to none other than Akashi. As the ball was about to land, he shot the ball in midair and hit a brilliant volley from outside the box. The ball went like a missile towards the post. Unfortunately the ball hit the bar and went out of play. And as the ball went out of play, the referee blew the whistle, signaling the end of the first half. Unable to open the score sheet, the first half ended in a goalless draw. That was an amazing volley Akashi Senpei. Ichija Ryu complimented Akashi as they made their way towards the locker room. If only that volley would have ended in goal, it would have been the best goal of the tournament. Cough, cough, did you guys already forgot about my bicycle kick against the team from Fukushima? Hiro interrupted as he heard Ichija Ryu mentioning about the best goal of the tournament. The game progresses rather smoothly for the entirety of the first half with both sides getting fair amount of shots on target. Chapter 40 European Agent While they were goofily making their way towards the locker room, his eyes wandered at the crowds and suddenly he caught a glimpse of a familiar person at the seat above the tunnel. Witnessing the sight of someone familiar to him, he paused midway all of a sudden to take a better look at the person. What are you doing over there? Hurry up, or else the coach will scold you. 
Akashi spoke while looking at him and interrupted him. Ah, I thought I saw somebody familiar in the stand. He got distracted by Akashi and couldn't see the person clearly. Once again, he looked at the seat where he witnessed the sight of the familiar person. But that seat was occupied by a girl with blonde hair and white skin. Is it a girl? He <laughs> he. Akashi chuckled as he made his way towards Hiro. He then started to look at the stands in front. Oh ho, your taste is truly unique. I didn't expect you to be interested in foreigners. No it's not her. There was another person sitting in that seat. Hiro tried to reason with Akashi. Yeah, yeah, and that person happened to be a white blonde chick. Ha ha ha, but Akashi kept on teasing him. Akashi Senpei are you a part of the gang? Keiji Tagashi, second year defender of Ukami Elementary School interrupted them from behind. No, which idiot told you that? Akashi erupted as he heard the statement of Tagashi. Nobody did. It's just you speak like a gangster and you dress up like one too. Tagashi stammered and took a step back in fear. Most of the times Akashi spoke in gangster slangs. Already 4 feet 11 inches tall at the age of 11, he was a year older than Hiro. And because of his appearance and the manner of speech, people often mistook him for gangster. PFT ha ha ha, yeah right he's a member of a gang. A very dangerous one, you might have heard the name of the gang, Fearless Oni Gang. Hiro chuckled. Tagashi nervously shook his head. So I was right, you are indeed a member of a gang. Tagashi exclaimed in fear, no, I'm not a gangster, just stop scaring him already and stop joking Hiro. You might mislead him this way. Akashi exasperated and began to stare at Hiro as if he would swallow him alive. Okay, okay, don't look at me like that. I was kidding okay, ha ha ha, he's not a member of a gang. It's just his grandfather used to be one of the Yakuza's in his younger days. Akashi here is just a normal student. Hiro reassured Tagashi that he was only joking about the things he said earlier. Okay, now let's head to locker room. Or else Coach Miura will eat us alive. Asterisk 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 asterisk. What are you looking for uncle? The girl with blonde hair exclaimed while looking at a man in his early 30s, bending down in his seat, scavenging for something beneath the seat he was seated. Arg, there it is. My notebook. Just how the hell did it reach that far? The man was looking for his notebook which he accidentally dropped during the time of the game. He was struggling to reach his notebook. Note, uncle please speak in English. While the girl was speaking in English, the man was speaking Japanese. The blonde girl was having difficulties understanding the man's words. He stretched his fingers to reach his notebook which had somehow fallen beneath his seat. Just as he reached his notebook, he stood up and began to dust his clothes. Did they not clean the stadium at all? The man exasperated as he was dusting his clothes. Ah right, what were you saying? Oh yeah I forgot that you don't understand Japanese very well. Ha ha, I'm sorry about that. The man apologized goofily, forgetting that he was still speaking Japanese. Please speak in English uncle. The blonde girl exasperated. Was I speaking in Japanese again? Ha ha ha, my bad. Sorry, sorry. Even though he was apologizing to the girl in front, it was clear from the way he spoke that he wasn't even sorry for his mistake. Where are the players? Uck, did you already forget that it's half time? Yeah right, I forgot about it. Ha ha ha, just how the hell did you even manage to be a licensed agent in Europe with that clumsy attitude of yours? The blonde girl intoned as she witnessed the clumsy attitude of the man in front, while contorting her face in disbelief. She was clearly annoyed by his clumsy behavior. Having majored in sports science, the man she was talking to was one of the lesser-known agent of Europe. Born from a Japanese mother and British father, he was one of the youngest licensed agent in Europe. Though still not famous, he would go on to manage world-class players in the near future. Dressed in a set of Hawaiian shirt and sorts, he had a sun hat on top of his head. With a shade of sunglasses covering his eyes, he was dressed in a way that seemed like he was on a vacation. With brown eyes, sharp nose and chiseled jaw covered with patches of golden beard, one could hardly believe that he was already in his thirties. Just you wait and see my niece Luna. I'm gonna be the best agent with the best player under his wing one day. And everybody's gonna remember the name Eric Parker. Ha ha ha, he laughed maniacally while announcing his name, all of a sudden. There he goes again, lost in his own delusional fantasies. And just how many times do I need to tell him to speak in English? Ugh. Leave it, I don't even care now. Luna exclaimed in her muffled voice. She was clearly annoyed by his behavior. However since she had seen that side of him several times already, she didn't even bother to explain her annoyance to him. She was already fed up of his self-indulging behavior. 
Luna was the only daughter of Eric's elder brother Kevin Parker. Born and raised in England, she didn't know any Japanese. Since her mother belonged to a British origin, everybody conversed in English in her home. And the only time she heard Japanese was the time when she visited her grandmother's place and when her father conversed to her grandmother. Since her grandfather had already passed away in his early 60s due to heart condition, her grandmother lived all by herself. Both Eric and Kevin offered her to move in with them several times, but she rejected them each and every time they asked her. And every time when she asked her why she didn't want to move in with either her father or her uncle, her grandmother always replied that the home she resided reminded her of her beloved husband. Also Eric and Kevin normally talked to each other in English, she could rarely hear them converse in Japanese. That's why her Japanese was very weak. Just why are we even here uncle? Luna questioned Eric who was still laughing maniacally. Eric paused as he heard her voice. He then perplexingly looked at her and replied, Don't you know that already? We're here to visit your grandmother's homeland. Yeah I do know about that. But what are we doing here in a kid's game? This is one of the biggest school level competition in Japan. And you're asking what are we doing here? Also you're a 16 year old kid yourself. So what right do you have to call this kids, kids? Eric began to blabber without stopping. Don't call me kid. I'm already a grown up. I'll soon leave the house for university after I complete my high school in few years and live independently. Luna exasperated. Also why are you scribbling on your note? Are you here to recruit some players? Luna continued. Hell no. Why would I recruit Asian players? With all due respect to Asian players, they are not talented enough to make us huge money. They don't get signed for huge amount of money in European markets. And if they're not signed for huge amount of money, I can't make money. So no, I'm not here to recruit players. Eric sternly declined her claims. Since Eric believed that Asian players were not up to par with European or South American players, he had never ever considered even in his dream to recruit any Asian players. Also since the market value of Asian players were not too high in European markets, he couldn't make money out of Asian players. Thus he avoided signing any Asian players. And him being there was pure coincidence. He just coincidentally happened to be in Tokyo around the time of the final. And since he had a lot of free time, he went to the stadium just to enjoy the match and get entertained. However even when merely spectating the match, he couldn't control himself from noting the details of players in his notebook out of his habit. He wasn't noting their playstyle to recruit them. In simple terms he wasn't there to recruit or scout players, he was only there to enjoy the game as a spectator. Chapter 41 Ukami vs Tokyo 2 After a 10 minute break, the players started to make their way towards the pitch, out of the tunnel. Both of the teams swapped their sides as the players from both teams began to align themselves in their respective positions. Still in doubt about the person he witnessed earlier, he casted a glance at the stands. As he turned his gaze towards the seat where Luna was seated, he finally got the glimpse of Eric. That person, where have I seen that person? He began to wonder as he witnessed the sight of Eric in the stand. I'm sure I've seen him somewhere before in my past life. Somehow he feels really familiar, but I can't recall exactly where I've seen him. Unable to identify the person in front, he began to rummage through his past memories to find out the identity of the familiar person in the stand. Ah that's right. He's the soon-to-be-famous agent of European origin Eric Parker. He finally recalled the identity of Eric after thinking for a while. Despite being an agent, Eric was well known by the football fans because of his insane popularity in his past life. His appearance is almost similar to that of his 52-year-old self. So he only got few wrinkles on his face as he aged. Damn talk about longevity, he mumbled in, ah upon recalling the identity of Eric. Ding, new quest unlocked. Quest objective. Impress the agent and get an offer from Eric. Rewards. Muscle enhancing elixir. Penalty. 8 random stat points deduction. Accept. Or. Reject. Note. If you reject the mission the system will get deactivated for 4 years. A quest at this point of match. And what is this muscle enhancing elixir? The system had been providing me with attribute points, skill or roulette tickets previously. But why this sudden change? And why is the penalty so harsh? Like if it was that easy to impress a European agent then the world would have been flooding with professional players by now. Aish, at this point I don't even care. I guess if I fail, I'll just have to wave goodbye to my 8 stat points. I just hope that it won't deduct all 8 points from my physical stat. After all it's already lower as compared to other stat. He began to cuss the system for its unfairness. 
After all just like he mentioned, it was not an easy feat to impress foreign agents. Moreover he knew the situation of Asian players in European markets. Not many Asian players that played in Asia made it to Europe. Even though there were few remarkable talents showcasing their talent in the top European leagues such as Hungmin Sun, Takumi Minamino and others, not many Asians performed well in European leagues even after getting signed by European clubs. Hung Min Sun is a South Korean football player who plays in one of the Premier League teams, Tottenham Hotspur. He's also the only Asian to ever win Premier League Golden Boot. Known for his superb pace and ridiculous goal-scoring ability, he's a world-class player of Asian origin. The number of Asian players who performed well in European leagues were very limited. Hiro Senpei, Hiro Senpei. While he was thinking of the quest given by the system, he was blankly staring at the stands, forgetting that he was still in the middle of an ongoing match. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, he stammered coming back to his senses. Are you okay? Ichija Ryu inquired with a worried face. Ah uh, yeah I'm fine, you've been spacing out for a while by now. So I was worried if something had happened to you. Ichija Ryu expressed his concerns of him. Thank you for worrying about me. But I'm really fine, Hiro intoned. Except, beep. Just then the referee blew his whistle. With no player changes from both sides, the game commenced with the whistle of the referee. Since he was given a mission by the system, he could no longer play like his usual self. He needed to perform beyond his abilities and give his 100%, if he wanted to leave an impact on Eric. With both sides struggling to score a goal, neither of the teams were able to open the score sheet. Even though Hero's team was dominating the position, they were still struggling to guide the ball inside the net. At 47th minute of the game, the game took a new turn. Midori Aoi, the attacking midfielder of Tokyo Elementary School was holding on to the ball. Slowly dribbling the ball, he was scanning the field in search of his teammates. Kaminari Shinji who somehow managed to shook his mark began to run forward. Noticing the run of Kaminari Shinji, Midori Aoi quickly released the ball towards him. He sent a powerful through ball towards the left flank where Kaminari Shinji was making his run. He hit the ball a little too hard and it seemed that the ball would go out of bounds. Yuto Um, the second-year right fullback of Ukami Elementary School immediately left his position and ran towards the ball to clear the ball. As the ball was kicked a little too hard, he slowed down his pace. He guessed that the ball would go out of bounds and thus intentionally slowed down to conserve his stamina. However unlike him, Kaminari Shinji was very persistent. He didn't stop chasing the ball even while knowing it would go out of bounds. He was simply unwilling to stop before trying his best. I hit it a little too hard. Shit, it'll go out of bounds. Midori Aoi mumbled as he placed both of his hands on his temple in disappointment and closed his eyes. Woohoo. Suddenly the cheers of crowds erupted like a volcanic eruption. Midori Aoi lifted his head up, upon hearing the sudden loud cheers of the fans. The ball was rolling back towards Kaminari Shinji instead of going out of bounds. It had landed inside the pitch, a certain distance away from the boundary lines. But instead of bouncing forward, the ball was bouncing backwards. Subconsciously he had applied a backspin on the ball. What's this? The ball which seemed like it was going out of bounds has suddenly started rolling back. What an amazing ball from Midori Aoi. But looking at his face, even he looks shocked. Seems like he had subconsciously applied a backspin on the ball. Ha 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 ha. As the ball began to roll backwards, Yuto Um quickly increased his pace. However he couldn't still manage to reach the ball before Kaminari Shinji. Kaminari Shinji took hold of the ball and began to dribble the ball inside the penalty box. Even though Yuto Um couldn't reach the ball, he tried to correct his mistake by stopping Kaminari Shinji from making the shot. With Um in front of him and Nanahosi Ren chasing after him, Kaminari Shinji began to look for his options. Mizuhara Aoi the center forward of Tokyo Elementary School was waiting for Shinji's pass inside the penalty box. However he was being heavily marked by Akashi. And no matter how much he struggled, he wasn't able to break free from the clutch of Akashi. He then looked behind him but all he could see was players of Ukami Elementary School. With Nanahosi Ren approaching closer towards him, he thought of cutting in. Um cautiously approached him, keeping his gaze fixated at the ball, he maintained his composure. Shinji began to dribble the ball towards him, slowly. Where will he go? Will it be left or right? Yuto Um began to wonder while constantly shifting his gaze between Shinji and the ball. Shinji tapped the ball with the inside of his right foot. Along with the ball, he moved his body to the right as well. It's right. Since Shinji was already inside the penalty box, he had to be extra careful. 
slight physical touch could have lead to a penalty after all, and it was already 48th minute of the match. With only 12 minutes and additional time remaining, he couldn't afford to give away a penalty at that moment. Um moved his body to right and stretched his legs towards the direction of the ball. Got it, he thought as he was about to hit the ball. Just then Shinji kicked the ball with the inside of his left leg and shifted the direction of the ball towards the right. Skillfully passing Um, he was open to shoot. However he wasn't able to control his body. He was getting off balance and was about to fall. But just before he fell down, he managed to land a kick on the ball. Akashi came forward stretching his legs to block his shooting course. Luckily the ball touched the tip of his boot and bounced upwards. As the ball rebounded off his boot, Ken rushed forward toward the ball, but so did Mizuhara Aoi. Ken leapt towards the ball which was descending from the sky. Mizuhara Aoi jumped towards the ball as well. Smack, since Ken was a goalkeeper who could use his hands to reach the ball, he was the first one to reach the ball. He punched the ball away. And even though he punched the ball away, Mizuhara Aoi crashed against him when competing for the ball. The punched, away ball headed towards Midori Aoi. In midair he shoot the ball and connected a brilliant volley. The ball flew like a missile and landed inside the net of Ukami Elementary School. Beep. Chapter 42 Ukami vs Tokyo 3 As Mizuhara Aoi crashed against Ken, Ken fell down hard on the ground. And in that very moment when Ken was brought down by Mizuhara Aoi, Midori Aoi shot the loose ball towards the post. With nobody to stop the ball, the ball landed inside the net. G-O-A-A-A-A-A-A-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-L-
As he witnessed Um's body shrunken in fear, he realized he was being very harsh on him. Sigh Tilda, I'm sorry about my tone, but this game is really important to me. So let's just give our best, shall we? Hiro released a deep sigh and apologized to Um for scaring him. He then started to walk towards his position. Sorry Captain, I won't repeat such mistakes again. Yuto Um apologized to Hiro after realizing his mistake. Hiro revealed a smile as he heard Um's apology. Even though he had a lazy mindset, he wasn't the type of guy who would avoid taking responsibilities for the mistakes committed. While they were conversing with each other, the referee was on a streak of his own. He had already shown three yellow cards to three different payers of Tokyo Elementary School. He also showed a straight red card to the coach of Tokyo Elementary School for his rude behavior against the referee and ejected him out of the stadium. With those dramas taking place in the field, the game was taking a drastic turn. Witnessing their coach getting dejected out of the stadium, the players of Tokyo Elementary School started to quiet down. After all they would only be losing their players, if they continued to argue with the referee. Seems like the players of Tokyo Elementary School have finally calmed down. That was a wise decision from the players of Tokyo Elementary School. After all they could have lost even more players, if they continued to argue with the referee. Now what will they do without the help of their coach? And as the situation got resolved, the referee awarded a free kick to Ukami Elementary School at the place where the foul was committed. Akashi was the one to take the free kick. He casually passed the ball towards Sasaki. Sasaki then began to search for his options while dribbling the ball towards the center of the pitch. Since three players of Tokyo Elementary School were already booked, they couldn't afford to play the game aggressively. Because all of the forwards of their team were being marked, Sasaki couldn't find any open spaces. Unable to find open spaces, he passed the ball towards Nanahosi Ren. Nanahosi Ren, who was already in the middle third of the pitch began to casually roam around the middle third of the pitch with the ball in his feet. The players of Tokyo Elementary School couldn't afford to let him roam freely with the ball. Both Mizuhara Aoi and Midori Aoi ran towards Nanahosi Ren. Just as they left their position, General and Ryu both started to make their run towards the goalpost. One running in the right flank and another in the left flank, they were both heading towards the goal. Instead of running forward, Hiro began to drop deep to receive the ball from Nanahosi Ren. Seeing Mizuhara Aoi and Midori Aoi approaching towards him, Nanahosi Ren immediately passed the ball towards Hiro who had dropped deep to receive the pass. While the defenders of Tokyo Elementary School were occupied with Jen and Ryu, they failed to notice the run of another player. Patiently waiting for the ball at the middle third of the pitch, just beneath the center line, Yuto Um began to make his run just at the moment when Nanahosi Ren released the ball from his feet. Witnessing Hiro making his run towards Nanahosi Ren, Ashiki Soba, the defensive midfielder of Tokyo Elementary School ran towards him. Sensing the presence of Ashiki Soba behind him, Hiro let the ball through his legs without touching it. Ashiki Soba couldn't figure out the intention of Hiro. Because, he was solely focused on Hiro, he didn't even realize that Hiro didn't touch the ball. As he let go of the ball, Hiro swiftly twisted his body and began to chase after the ball. Ashiki Soba couldn't react on time and he had to once again chase after Hiro for the ball. Two defenders of Tokyo Elementary School were already occupied with Jen and Ryu. And only a single defender stood in front of him and the goalkeeper. Oshida Ida, a five feet tall central defender of Tokyo Elementary School rushed towards him. With his massive body, he covered the entire vision of the post. He could no longer tell the position of the keeper of the Tokyo Elementary School unless he dribbled past Ida. With Ashiki Soba approaching him from behind and Oshida Ida in front of him, he needed to make his decision quickly. While dribbling the ball, he began to step over the ball consecutively with his both foot. Left, right, left, right. After stepping over the ball a little over three times, while stepping over the ball with his right foot on the fourth turn, he kicked the ball with the outside of his foot and passed the ball towards Yuto Um. Oshida Ida couldn't do anything other than stare at the ball. As the ball rolled towards Um, he didn't control the ball. Instead he shot the ball without stopping it. The ball flew towards the post. From the right edge of the penalty box, Um shot the ball. The ball flew towards the upper left corner of the goalpost. However the keeper managed to get a touch at the ball. And thus, the ball went out of bounds even though it was shot precisely at the post. Beep. As the ball went out of bounds, they were awarded a corner kick at the 51st minute of the match. Just then the assistant coach of Tokyo Elementary School decided to make a player change. 
The players of Ukami Elementary School couldn't help but stare at the player who was making his way towards the pitch. Quote dot 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 dot. He, Chapter 43 Ukami vs Tokyo IV. As the ball went out of bounds. With only 9 minutes and additional time remaining, the opponent team decided to make player changes. So he's finally coming in. Hiro mumbled as he witnessed the sight of the player who was stretching his legs in the sidelines. Player change for Tokyo Elementary School. Number 22 out number 2 in. Looks like Ashiki Soba is getting substituted for Nagasaki Akutsu. The star player of Tokyo Elementary School also famously known as Viper, has finally decided to step inside the pitch. He had played only a single match in this tournament this time around because of an injury he suffered during training. Nagasaki Akutsu, a 5 feet 4 inches tall, 13-year-old center back of Tokyo Elementary School was stretching his body in sidelines. Spiky straight black hair, elongated narrow monolid eyes with small dark pupil and a muscular lean body, Nagasaki Akutsu was radiating an ominous aura around him. Best of luck Akutsu-san! Ashiki Soba exclaimed as he substituted for Nagasaki Akutsu. He was the player who had costed them national championships during their previous face-off. The sole reason why they struggled to score goal against Tokyo Elementary School in their previous face-off was all because of Akutsu. In his first year if it weren't for Akutsu then he would have already registered a national champion medal under his name. As soon as he stepped on the field, he ran towards Hiro and began to mark him. The sole reason he was stepping on the field was to neutralize Hiro. With Nanahosi Rin as the set-piece taker, the players of Ukami Elementary School gathered inside the defensive half of Tokyo Elementary School for the corner kick. Nanahosi Rin played a short ball towards Sasaki who was standing a certain distance away from him. With the ball in his feet, Sasaki began to weigh his options. A high ball would have been easily cleared by Akutsu. Since Akutsu was the tallest player in the field, he couldn't recklessly cross the ball inside the penalty box. Unable to cross the ball inside the penalty box, he began to look for other options. Everybody were being heavily marked. Even Hiro was being tightly marked by Akutsu. Just when he was looking for a player to pass the ball, his eyes locked with Hiro's. Hiro gestured him to hold the ball and draw out the defenders as much as he could. Sasaki then began to dribble the ball diagonally towards the goalpost. As he was starting to dribble the ball towards the goalpost, players of Tokyo Elementary School began to rush towards him. Just then Hiro dashed towards Sasaki. Witnessing Hiro's run, Sasaki passed the ball towards Hiro and began to cut in. Hiro hit the ball back with the back of his heels and returned the ball back to Sasaki with a single touch. Tokyo Elementary School's players couldn't do anything at all. Without stopping the ball, Sasaki immediately released the ball back to Hiro. With swift 1-2 passes they left the defenders of Tokyo Elementary School in dust. As Hiro began to cut in with the ball, he found himself in front of Akutsu. Akutsu stood before him while staring at him with his fierce eyes. As if those eyes could see through his soul, a chill ran down his spine as he locked eyes with Akutsu. Hiro began to step over the ball. However Akutsu showed no reaction and remained absolutely calm. He didn't leave any space open for him to exploit. Not only did he prevent him from dribbling the ball forward, he also blocked all his pass courses. Just like a snake waiting for a perfect moment to strike its prey, he was patiently waiting for the moment when Hiro would make mistakes to perform the tackle. TCH just how much of a monster is he? Even with the help of system and years of football knowledge, I can't get past through him. Not only is he keeping his pressure on me, he's also blocking my pass courses. Unable to get past through Akutsu, Hiro started showing signs of frustration. The reason why Akutsu was called Viper was because of his playing style. Just like how a viper would suffocate its prey before swallowing it, Akutsu would maintain his pressure on his opponent until his opponent would eventually make mistakes subconsciously. That number two is on whole another level than the rest of the players on the field. Don't you agree uncle? The way he keeps his cool even when facing against an opponent inside his own box is truly remarkable. Luna began to praise Akutsu. Indeed if only he could play in Europe, he could develop even further. Eric replied while folding his hands, keeping his gaze fixated at the ball. That number 10 from the black team stand no chance against him. I wonder if it's true. Eric rolled his eyes towards his notebook and replied in his muffled voice. Subconsciously he had been keeping track of Hero from the very beginning of the match. Even though he denied his interest in Asian players, he was somehow drawn towards Hero's playstyle. And thus, he had been keeping track of his movement to test out his thoughts of him. 
While performing stepovers, suddenly he touched the ball with the outside of his right foot. At that moment Akutsu stretched his legs towards him to snatch the ball. That touch from Hiro wasn't a mistake. He intentionally tapped the ball with the outside of his boot to trick Akutsu into believing he made a mistake. As he kicked the ball with the outside of his right foot, he again tapped the ball with the inside of his right foot and performed a elastico. Hiro took full advantage of Akutsu's playstyle and manipulated him into believing he made a mistake. TCH he tricked me. Akashi clicked his tongue, but at least I'll force him into shooting with his left leg. Since most of the times Hiro scored goal with his right leg, Akutsu assumed that he was right-footed. Even though Akutsu could still reach him if he performed a sliding tackle, there was a possibility of a foul. And he was hesitant to foul him inside the penalty box. Just when Hiro was preparing to shoot the ball, Akutsu dashed towards him and threw his body in front of him. Fortunately he hadn't raised his legs yet to perform the shot. Hiro tapped the ball with the inside of his right foot. The ball rolled towards his left leg. Somehow I've managed to force him into shooting with his left leg. Akutsu revealed a satiated grin. Hiro kicked the ball hard with his left leg and shoved the ball down right the bottom left corner of the post. Even with his arms stretched, the keeper couldn't prevent the shot. For this whole time Akutsu was having a misconception of Hiro being right-footed. In fact his left foot carried as much shot power as his right foot, Hiro was ambidextrous. Go a a a a l l l l l l l l Hiro scored the goal at the 54th minute of the match and finally opened the scoresheet. Woohoo! The supporters of Ukami Elementary School bursted out in cheers as he scored that goal. Yeah goal! Eric yelled as Hiro scored the goal. Even Eric was forced to stand up from his seat. You sure? You didn't come here to recruit players? Luna mumbled upon witnessing his celebration. Ahem, that was a brilliant goal. Eric exclaimed while clearing his throat, as he tried to maintain his composure. Arg damn! How could you let that child loose Akutsu? The old man sitting beside them seemed extremely disappointed by Hiro's goal. After scoring that goal, Hiro began to run towards the sidelines where the substitute and staffs of Ukami Elementary School were seated. While taking his t-shirt off, he began to run towards the sidelines while flipping his t-shirt in his hands. Celebrating as if he had already won the national championship, his happiness knew no bounds. The players of Ukami Elementary School followed him but he didn't stop. He kept on running towards the sidelines where the substitutes of Ukami Elementary School were seated. Just as he reached the sidelines, he celebrated his goal by displaying his number 10 jersey to the supporters in the stands. Look at the audacity of that boy. He's trying to recreate Messi's celebration against Real Madrid. Hee <laughs> hee. Eric chuckled witnessing his audacity to flaunt his jersey in front of the packed stadium filled with supporters of Tokyo Elementary School. Tokyo Elementary School couldn't make a comeback in the remaining minute of the match. And thus, the game ended with a score of 1-0. Ukami Elementary School finally won the match against the six-time champion Tokyo Elementary School and registered their first ever national championship. Hiro's sole goal at the 54th minute of the match secured them the title. After the end of the match before award ceremony, the referee gathered both the teams for one last handshake. Weren't you right-footed? So how could you perform such powerful shot from your left leg? Akutsu questioned as he took Hiro's hand. Who told you that I was right-footed? I can shoot equally well with both my foot. It's just I haven't demonstrated the power of my left foot yet. Hiro replied as he shook hands with Akutsu. Chapter 44 Bonus Chapter New Champions While everybody were celebrating their victory against Tokyo Elementary School in the final of National Championship, Hiro noticed Akashi blankly staring at the scoreboard at the top of the stadium. Smack. Yo, what are you doing over here while acting all? Lost. Hiro smacked his back gently and began to question him. Arg, this sensation of pain feels too real to be a dream. So we did manage to win the national championship huh? Akashi bewilderingly exclaimed while coming back to his senses. He was having trouble discerning between reality and dream. Of course we won. If you're still having trouble discerning between reality and dream, then I can hit you once again. Ha ha. Hiro revealed a evil grin as he began to prepare himself to hit him one more time. As they won the match, a lot of people began to leave the stadium. Since most of them were supporters of Tokyo Elementary School, they weren't interested in staying behind to watch them lift the trophy. Atilda sa I guess this is it. Shall we head out to uncle? Luna inquired as she began to stretch her body which had gotten stiff after sitting for a long time. Eric remained completely silent, as if he was lost in some kind of thoughts, 
he was contemplatively staring at the pitch in front with his chin resting on the top of his folded hands. Uncle, uncle, witnessing his unresponsiveness, she reached out for him. Yeah, were you saying something? Eric replied upon coming back to his senses. Yeah I was asking you, if we should leave or not. You've been acting really weird. Luna intoned while staring at him. Sigh tilde tilde, let's leave. As Eric took a deep breath, he stood up from his seat and took out his sunglasses which he had tucked in his shirt's pocket during the match. He then put on his round-shaped sunglasses and began to walk away. As they started to leave the stands, Eric casted one last glance at the pitch. Boy you really are something else. With few supporters remaining, everybody expected the cheers of the spectators to die down. But on the contrary, those few supporters who were present in the stands to support Ukami Elementary School began to cheer at the top of their voice. Even with so few spectators, the stadium feels as lively as it was before the start of the game. Those few supporters of Ukami Elementary School are truly adding vitality to the stadium. After receiving their medals for attaining second position in the national tournament, the players of Tokyo Elementary School began to leave the stadium with their head bowed down. They couldn't look the supporters in their eyes. While leaving the stadium, Akutsu made his way towards Hiro. It was fun to play against you. I'll be graduating this year and we won't get to meet for a year. But I hope next time when we meet, we could meet as teammates rather than enemies. Akutsu mumbled and expressed himself. It was fun playing with you too. I'm sure we'll get a lot of opportunities to play together in the near future. Hiro replied as he extended his arms forward to perform one last handshake with Akutsu. Akutsu took his hands and smiled. He then ran towards his teammates. Sigh tilde tilde, damn, that was scary. Hiro released a deep breath as Akutsu left his sight. As genuine as Akutsu's intentions were, his smile was creepy as hell. And Hiro wasn't used to seeing him smile. He rather preferred his serious expression than his smiling face. Now on to the finale. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the new champions of Japanese elementary school level football tournament, Ukami Elementary School. As the commentator announced their team's name, they began to walk towards the stage to receive their medals. Unlike the time at prefectural tournament, an actual stage was set up in the stadium, this time around. With the banner of national championship hung in a temporarily prepared metallic pole and a slightly lifted wooden platform, the stage was set for the trophy celebration. As they walked up the stage, a gentleman in black suit handed them their medals. With a wide smile on his face, he congratulated the players as they received their medals from him. That man was the head of Ministry of Sports and Youth of Japan. He was the sports minister of Japan. Congratulations for winning the championship. You played really well. The sports minister spoke as he shook hands with Hiro. Since Hiro was the captain of the team, he was the last one to receive the medal. Thank you sir for your praises. It means a lot to hear those compliments from you sir. While shaking hands with him, Hiro bowed down his head to him. Bowing head when accepting compliments was a gesture of showing respect. And since Hiro was younger than the sports minister, he was required to bow his head while accepting the compliments in order to show his respect towards sports minister who was way older than him by a mile. Ho ho, players like you are the future of our country. As they retracted their hands, Hikaru Matsuyama, the sports minister of Japan handed him the trophy. As he took the trophy from his hands, he began to stare at the trophy in his hand in awe. With a shape that resembled a wine glass and a handlebar on each side, the trophy was painted in gold. With few fake jewels embedded in it, one could hardly tell if it was a real gold trophy or a fake one. You can see it all you want when we get back. But will you hurry up now? Akashi yelled as he witnessed Hiro staring at the trophy in his hand. Yeah captain, your teammates are waiting for you. Right guys, Ichija Ryu yelled. Yeah, hurry up. His teammates yelled as he was taking time to come up to the stage. His teammates had been eagerly waiting for him since a while. Coming back to his senses, he rushed towards his teammates. As he prepared to lift the trophy, everybody began to wiggle their hands and chant. Who? Just as he lifted the trophy, they yelled. Woo! Champions! Champions! Jumping and singing, they began to celebrate. The celebration continued for a while. The supporters were enjoying the trophy celebration and so were the players. The players took turn to lift the trophy. The family of players who had flown to Tokyo to watch them play, poured onto stage to celebrate with them. After handing the trophy to his teammates, he rushed towards the sidelines where his parents were happily clicking his photos with smiles on their faces. Dad, Mom, let's join the celebration. He exclaimed as he got closer to them. No, no, it's your moment. 
Go celebrate it with your teammates. His mother replied. Yeah you should go celebrate it with your teammates. Takashi added. Even though they didn't mean anything negative, their response saddened him. Since he couldn't celebrate such victory with his parents in his previous life, he desperately wanted to celebrate his victory with his parents in his present life. At least let's click a picture together. He intoned while sniffing his snot. With tears forming in his eyes, he was on the verge of crying. Despite being a grown-up adult from inside, he couldn't control his emotions this time around. There was still a soft spot around his heart for his parents. His eyes turned red as tears began to form in his eyes. Upon witnessing his sad face, they immediately went over towards him to console him. Momo quickly grabbed his hands and began to wipe away his tears with her bare hands. Don't cry now, it's a moment of celebration. So it's not good to cry at such moments. Now let's go celebrate the victory. Takashi exclaimed, trying to cheer him up. Takashi took his hands and lifted him up. While carrying him on his back, Takashi went towards his teammates. Let's go champ. They then joined his teammates too. Celebrate their triumph. The celebration continued for a while. Akashi. Hiro called out for Akashi who was singing and dancing with his teammates. Akashi however was so much engrossed in the celebration that he couldn't listen to his voice. Quadruple A. Ka. She. He yelled at the top of his voice. This time around Akashi heard his voice and walked towards him. Yeah Hiro. You need me for something. Akashi mumbled. Yeah. Can you take a picture of us? Us. Akashi failed to notice his parents because of the commotion going on. Yeah can you take a picture of me with my mom and dad? Hiro pointed behind him at his parents. Hello Mrs. Takahashi. Hello Mr. Takahashi. Akashi immediately greeted his parents by bowing his head as soon as he noticed his parents. And as he handed his phone to Akashi, he ran towards his teammates. He then brought the trophy and joined his parents. While placing the trophy in the middle, he bit his middle. With his mother and father accompanying him, Akashi took the picture of them three together. This picture looks really good. We should definitely frame this and hung it on the living room. Don't you agree honey? Momo exclaimed while pointing at the picture in her smartphone. Chapter 45 Eric's Dilemma Their trophy celebration lasted for a while. And finally after a group photo with the cup, their celebration came to an end. I've done all I can but why can't I see system notification for the completion of the quest? Did I fail somehow? He wondered. Well it's not even that surprising though. Guess I'll be bidding my farewell to my 8 stat points. Asterisk 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 asterisk. April 9, 2019. After the end of the match, Eric returned to his mother's ancestral house which was located in Shibuya City, Tokyo. As soon as he entered his room, he threw himself in his bed. While lying with his face facing against the ceiling, he began to replay the match in his mind. That kid was really something else. But there are many kids like him around the world. And moreover he's Asian, so should I leave him or sign him? He was in conflict with himself. He couldn't bring himself to decide whether to sign Hiro or let him go. As he analyzed his play even further, he got even more confused. While his gameplay impressed him, he couldn't bring himself to go against his philosophy and sign him. Yet he couldn't bring himself to let him go either. Arg, it's frustrating. He exasperated while rubbing his hair in frenzy. Let's investigate him first and then we'll decide. He was getting restless while thinking of Hiro. Unable to decide, he got up from his bed and walked towards his desk. As he pulled the chair and sat on top of it, he pulled out his laptop from his drawer and placed it atop his table. He then began to search for anything related to Hiro. Ukami Elementary School. He typed on the Google search bar without much expectations. As he pressed enter, several results popped up on his screen. Whoa, there are a lot more results than what I originally expected. Eric mumbled in awe upon witnessing the results shown by Google. While going through his videos, he coincidentally stumbled upon Hero's YouTube channel. So this kid's got a YouTube channel too. Whoa, look at those subscribers. He's like a local YouTube celebrity. Eric mumbled in awe upon witnessing the number of views and subscribers in his video. As he began to go through his YouTube videos, Eric could no longer stop him from contacting Hero. He then began to search for his contact information. While searching for his contact information, he chanced upon the contact number of his school. April 10, 2019, the day after the final match of tournament. Hero was lying in his bed with his eyes wide open. It was already 7.45 a.m. Even, though his eyes were open, he couldn't bring himself to leave his bed. 
Since the school had given a day off for the players who participated in the tournament, he was in no hurry to wake up. Chirp, chirp. While lying in bed, he heard chirps of birds outside his window. Yet he couldn't bring himself to wake up from his bed. He casted a glance at his window. Rays of morning sun illuminating from the gaps of the curtains shone bright in his eyes. Those bright rays of sunlight made him uncomfortable. And thus, he began to shade his eyes from those bright rays with his hands. He then turned his head and began to stare at the ceiling above him. Sigh tilde tilde, I want to sleep, yet I can't today. He mumbled. Usually he'd be taking a nap around that time, yet that day he was wide awake. He tried to close his eyes but still he couldn't fall asleep. Feeling restless, he thought of checking on the system. System activate. As he mumbled, a holographic blue screen appeared before his eyes. He then began to fiddle with the system. While fiddling through the system, he noticed a bell icon glowing in red color. Huh what's that bell-like thing? It wasn't there before. With his eyebrows raised, he paused for a while as he noticed the bell icon. Out of sheer curiosity, he clicked on the bell icon. Just as he clicked the bell icon, the system directed him towards a new page. System update available. Required attribute point for the system upgrade, 100. Attribute point in possession, 83. Note, please complete your quest to earn more attribute points to upgrade the system. Huh attribute points can be used like that as well. I thought that it was used for raising the stats. He mumbled as he witnessed the text on the screen. Even though he was gifted with a system, he hadn't been using system much. And thus his knowledge of the system was very limited. System can you elaborate more about the use of attribute points? Attribute points description. A currency of the system which can be used to exchange items in system store, increase stats and upgrade system features. Note. 10 attribute point equals 1 stat point. You can exchange 10 attribute points for 1 stat point of your desire. I see. So basically 10 attribute points can be exchanged for 1 stat points. So 1 attribute point only amounts to 0 0.1 stat point. No wonder my progress is slow. It's really hard to increase stat points. Even with the help of system you can't just miraculously become the world's best player overnight. He mumbled as he tried to figure out the use of attribute points. But how do I gain attribute points? It can be gained only via quest and daily mission. Since the moment he gained the system, he hadn't used his attribute points. He had been saving his attribute points for the time of need. Damn, the attribute points which I saved for almost 5 years only amounts to 8 stat points. It's a daylight robbery, he intoned as he thrusted his hand and pushed his upper body up. Hiru, what's that sound that I heard? His mother yelled as she heard a loud sound coming from his room. Nothing mom. The sound must have come from the outside. He replied while trying to hide his actions. April 10, 2019. Ring, ring, ring. Hello, it's Saizuka speaking. How may I help you? Hello, is this the number of Ukami Elementary School? Eric inquired. Yes, it's the number of Ukami Elementary School. How may I help you? Hello, it's Eric Parker speaking. I'm a football agent from Europe. And I was wondering if you'd be able to provide me with the contact number of one of your students. Can you please hold on for a minute? I'll pass the phone to our principal, so that you can discuss it with him. Saizuka Sensei, the personal assistant of the principal of Ukami Elementary School spoke as she heard Eric's reply. Step, step, step. She then hurriedly rushed towards the principal's office while carrying the phone in her hands. Knock, knock, knock. She knocked on the door of principal's office. Yes, who's this? Principal Miyamoto spoke from inside his office. Sir it's Saizuka, your PA. Oh it's you Saizuka Sensei. Please enter. Principal Miyamoto allowed Saizuka Sensei to enter. Saizuka Sensei then handed the phone to Principal Miyamoto. Miyamoto Takumi speaking. How may I help you? It's a pleasure to speak with you Takumi-san. I'm Eric Parker, an agent from Europe. I've been wondering if you could provide me with the contact details of one of your players. Eric exclaimed in a soft voice. He was extremely polite while making his request. At first Principal Miyamoto doubted Eric's claim and was hesitant to provide him with the contact information. But as they continued to talk for a while, he confirmed that Eric's claims were all true. It was pleasure talking to you Takumi-san. I've got some works to do right now, so if you'll excuse me then I shall take my leave for now. Let's continue our talk tomorrow, shall we? Eric cheerfully exclaimed as he tried to hung the call. Then we shall do that Eric-san. Also we'll discuss more about the deal tomorrow when we meet. Ha ha ha, have a good day Eric-san. Principal Miyamoto replied.
You two have a good day to Kumi-san. As he said his well wishes, he hung up the call. After sweet-talking Principal Miyamoto to Kumi for a while Eric finally attained the contact number of Hiro's family. That stingy old man wants me to promote his school's name in exchange for providing me with the contact number of Hiro. Well it's not that big of a deal since I'll be leaving for Europe in few days either way. So I'll fulfill his wish as a charitable request. In exchange for providing Eric with the contact number of Hiro, Principal Miyamoto wanted to use his name. Even though he had nothing to lose from that deal, he still didn't have anything to gain from that deal either except getting the contact number of Hiro. Principal Miyamoto wanted to use Eric and Hiro's name as marketing tool to boost his school's name. Since most of the times he would be in Europe, Eric reluctantly agreed to his deal. Eric then began to dial the number given by Principal Miyamoto. Ring, 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 hello, it's Mrs. Takahashi speaking, how may I help you? Momo answered the call from Eric. Hello, I'm Eric Parker. I'm a football agent from Europe and I'd like to talk about your son. Would you have some minutes to spare? Chapter 46 Interest from Youth Teams During the time when Eric called her, she was in the kitchen preparing breakfast for her family. And as Eric introduced himself, Momo turned off the gas stove and sat down at the dining table. Hello Mr. Parker, how may I help you? Thank you for your precious time Mrs. Takahashi. I'm sure by now you may have already guessed the reason behind this call. So I won't beat around the bush and say it to you directly. I'm interested in your son and I'd like to sign him. Eric stated bluntly without beating around the bush. While talking with Principal Miyamoto, Eric had learned from him that Hiro's mother was a smart straightforward lady who was not fond of people talking in circles. Thus, he expressed his desire without delaying any further. Hearing his reply, she paused for a while. With her brows drawing closer and face tightening, she began to think. Even though she didn't know much about football, she knew the meaning behind his words. She had been learning about football in her spare time to be of help to her son. I very well understand your interest towards my son Mr. Parker, but you know he's still 10 years old, right? And he's still attending elementary school. So isn't it a bit too soon for that? Hero's mother inquired. Even though she was a person who was very fond of money, she wasn't the type of person who'd recklessly gamble her son's future. She prioritized his well-being more than anything else. I'm very well aware of your concerns towards your son Mrs. Takahashi. And I'm well aware of his age too. But Mrs. Takahashi here in Europe exceptional players get scouted by agents even before they make it to the professional stage. But still, isn't it a bit too soon for him to move to Europe? Momo expressed her concerns. She was hesitant to send her son away to some foreign country before his 18th birthday. However she was also very well aware of her son's interest and talent in football. Thus, despite her unwillingness to send him away, she was somewhat prepared to go with him, if it could help him elevate his career. Ha ha ha, no Mrs. Takahashi you've got it all wrong. He won't be moving to Europe until he turns 18. So you can be at ease regarding that matter. And there's also this rule in Europe that forbids club to sign foreign players who have not turned 18. I only want to sign Hiro for now and help him elevate his career in Japanese football. And only after he'll turn 18, I'll present him to the clubs in Europe. Eric laughed heartily and helped her clear her doubts. Eric's words convinced her. She was relieved to hear that he wouldn't need to move to Europe right away. So Mrs. Takahashi would you be interested in my offer? Eric added, would it be possible for me to give you the answer after I discuss it with my husband and son? Since this concerns the future of my son, so I'd like to talk to him before giving you my answers. You can take all the time you want Mrs. Takahashi. Since I'd be visiting Hiro's school tomorrow, you can give me your answer tomorrow at the school. Yokohama, Kanagawa, Japan. Nissan Stadium, the grasses in the pitch were reflecting the golden rays of morning sun. Still relatively closer to the horizon, the morning rays of sun had casted a silhouette of the stadium at one end of the pitch while the other end was lit with the bright illuminating light of the sun. With one end of the pitch covered in the shade and another end engulfed in the bright rays of morning sun, a match was taking place in the stadium. Group of players in red and green bibs were competing among themselves. At the sidelines, a man in his early 40s was seen yelling at the players in front. Dressed in a comfortable green tracksuit, he wore a very stern expression in his face. What are you doing Shunta? Your timing is way too slow. You need to move faster in order to shake off your mark. With a relatively short stature, he was about 5 feet 6 inches tall. And with a relatively tanned skin, his frenzy outgrown beard and messy medium-length black hair gave away the impression of a homeless person. 
His lush black eyebrows made his double lid eye even more appealing. However the eye bags under his eyes gave away the impression of sleep deprivation. As if he was deprived of sleep for days, the eye bags underneath his eyes were pretty intense. While he was yelling at the players, another man in his mid-thirties with a relatively average-looking appearance made his way towards the pitch. Dressed in turquoise blue shirt and casual grey pants, he made his way towards the pitch while carrying a tablet in his hand. Neatly combed hair and clean-shaven face, he gave away the vibe of a typical Japanese salary man. Manager Tatsuya, Manager Tatsuya, I need to show you something. The man exclaimed as he got closer to the man at the sidelines. The man in the sidelines was the manager of the youth team of Yokohama F. Marinos. Yokohama F. Marionos was a team which belonged to the first division league of Japanese professional football leagues. Having already won three league titles, they were one of the powerhouse football team of J-1. And that man Tatsuya Kaido was the manager of the U18 team of Yokohama F. Marinos. Still only 42 years old, he was one of the youngest manager in the league. It was already impressive for him to coach such a big team at his age in Japan. Yet what was even more amazing was the fact that he had one of the highest level coaching license in Japan. He had a S-class coaching license which allowed him to coach even the professional teams of J-1. What is it this time Haruki? Tatsuya replied while sounding all annoyed. The average looking man with the tablet in his hand was the youth scout, Haruki Mitsua, of Yokohama F. Marinos. Already in his mid-thirties, he was a very enthusiastic man. You need to watch this. He exclaimed as he played the video of the match between Ukami Elementary School and Tokyo Elementary School. What's special in it? It's just a bunch of kids running for the ball. He exclaimed as he tried to shrug him off. Tatsuya-san, just watch this for once. Haruki pleaded. Hearing his plea, Tatsuya could no longer ignore him. And thus he began to watch the video of the match. That number 10 kid looks really good. He exclaimed while watching the video. His techniques, his dribble, his vision, the way he controls the ball and dictates the pace of the game. It feels like I'm watching Prime Zidane himself. Tatsuya mumbled in awe, it'll get even more interesting. Just keep watching. Haruki had compiled important highlights from the match between Ukami Elementary School and Tokyo Elementary School, so that Tatsuya wouldn't need to watch the whole match. Whoa, are these guys even students? That defender from opposing team is good too. While the rest of the players were pretty average, he couldn't stop himself from praising Akutsu and Hiro. No wonder you're the coach of the U18 team of Yokohama F. Marinos. You could spot the star players with a single glance. Haruki mumbled in awe. After watching the whole video, Tatsuya revealed a wide grin. Tatsuya suddenly grabbed Haruki's shoulder and looked him in the eyes. I want these two players Haruki. Get me these two players. He exclaimed with great excitement. But Tatsuya-san one of those players belongs to Tokyo Elementary School. Haruki exclaimed while trying to break free from his hold. Huh Elementary School? Tatsuya bewilderingly questioned. Yes Tatsuya-san, the match you just watched is the final match of the National Elementary School Tournament. Huh, I thought they'd at least be in middle school. Has elementary school level football progressed this far already in Japan? Tatsuya gave Haruki a perplexing look. Then how old are these kids? The defender is already 13 and he'll be graduating elementary school this year. However the attacking midfielder you're so interested in is only 10 years old. He'll be graduating elementary school next year. Huh only 10 years old. And he's that good. Tatsuya couldn't believe that Hiro was only 10 years old after witnessing his gameplay. At least we can still recruit the defender next year. Uh about that. He'll most like join the academy of Tokyo FC since he's from Tokyo. Haruki intoned. Damn. We'll face even more tough opponents next year. It's kinda sad we won't get to recruit him but still the future of Japanese football looks quite good. Tatsuya exclaimed while revealing a smile on his face. What about that kid? I'm sure we can recruit him in our junior youth team and promote him to the youth team within some year. Chapter 47 Family Talk The scene around other professional team was pretty much similar to that of Yokohama F. Marinos Besides the youth scout of Yokohama F. Marinos, youth scouts of several other professional teams and schools were present at the stadium to spectate the match between Ukami Elementary School and Tokyo Elementary School. Even though not many teams in Japan had put emphasis on youth team in the past. However things were changing and many professional teams were beginning to copy the European system. Instead of buying expensive players, they were starting to invest on young talents. 
And it hadn't been that long since professional teams in Japan started operating their youth teams more seriously. Hiro go freshen up and come down for breakfast. His mother yelled while he was taking his sweat time fiddling with the system. Okay mom, he yelled back. He then closed the system and hopped out of his bed. After getting out of his bed, he began to fold the blankets and started to make his bed. Ring, ring, ring. While making his bed, suddenly his phone started to ring. Who's calling me this early in the morning? He wondered as he tried to take a peek at his phone which was located at the top of the drawer beside his bed. Akashi, why is he calling me this early in the morning? The one who was calling him was Akashi. As soon as he picked his call, Akashi began to spit his words in rapid-fire succession. Sup, it's me, what are you doing today? Are you free? I got this urge to game today. Do you want to tag along with me to the arcade? Hiro couldn't handle his loud voice and he immediately distanced his phone from his ear. Hello, hello, why aren't you replying? Akashi kept on talking. Hmm, perhaps the network's not working. Or it must be server issues. Finally as he stopped his blabbering, Hiro answered the call, have you calmed down? And don't start to blabber like before. Akashi then paused for a while. So now tell me why have you called me this early in the morning? Hiro questioned, I just want to ask you if you're free today. Hmm, I don't have anything to do today. So I guess I'm kinda free. Hiro replied after thinking for a while. Then let's go to the arcade together. Akashi in tone sounding all exited. Hmm, arcade huh? Again Hiro began to ponder over the topic of arcade. Well I don't have anything to do today. So why not? Then let's meet at the community park at 10. Without even hearing his reply, Akashi hung the call. As if he was only calling him to hear his yes or no, he cut off the call as soon as Hiro agreed to his request. Asterisk 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 asterisk. Step, step. After brushing his teeth, he made his way towards the kitchen. As he entered the kitchen, he found his mother and father sitting silently at the dining table. The room was filled with an eerie silence. His father lifted his head slightly and looked at him with icy cold gaze. Come here and take your seat. He spoke while wearing a serious expression on his face. Why does he look so serious today? I've not seen him like that in years. He wondered as he walked towards the dining table. He was pondering the reason behind his father's facial expression. Did I do something wrong to upset him? As he took his seat, he hesitatingly took a peek at his father's face. We need to discuss something with you hero. His father spoke while staring at him. Even though he hadn't done anything wrong to upset him, he began to worry even more upon witnessing the stern expression in his face. This is a serious matter, so I hope you don't take it lightly. Takashi mumbled, feeling all anxious, he nodded his head. His heart rate spiked and he began to sweat. The stern, expression on his father's face only made him more anxious. Congratulations hero, your talent has even been noticed by Europeans. You've got an offer from an European agent. Suddenly his father congratulated him with a wide grin on his face. His face quickly changed its expression from serious to happy. And sorry about my expression from before. I just wanted to see your reaction. And my oh my you're pretty terrified. Ha ha ha. Takashi was playing a prank on him by intentionally showcasing a serious expression. His father would sometimes play pranks on him out of blue. Takashi and Momo, both of them burst out in laughter as Takashi finished his sentence. Upon hearing his father's words, he was left dumbfounded. He then took a peek at his mother's face. Unlike his father, his mother was a straightforward person who didn't like prank and jokes. What mom, you two were also involved in his act. He complained, sorry about that hero, I told him not to do that, but he wouldn't listen to me. So I too joined in for the fun. She expressed while laughing, I'm really sorry about that hero, but you indeed got an offer from an European agent. His father mumbled while trying to hold his laughter. If it was his younger self, he would have immediately walked out of the room feeling all agitated. But he accepted their jokes and laughed with them instead. After a while as the laughter died down, they began to discuss about the offer from Eric. So he says that he'll help you develop your career in Japan until you reach 18 years of age. He also mentioned about that, FIFA the governing body of football has brought a new rule into effect. And that rule forbids the club to sign a foreign player before turning 18. Momo spoke while trying to recall the things Eric said to her in the phone. So what do you want to do Hiro? If you agree to the deal then we can talk about the deal tomorrow in your school. He said that he'd be visiting your school tomorrow. Momo added, since he already had a quest from the system, he couldn't refuse the offer under any circumstances. 
and it was once in a lifetime opportunity to get scouted by the soon to be famous European agent Eric Parker. As he would amass fame in his later years, top players from all over the world would dream to work with him. Just like how Jorge Mendes, the famous agent, made possible the transfer of Cristiano Ronaldo from Manchester United to Real Madrid, Eric in his later years would go on to pull such amazing feats and announce his presence to the world. And thus, there was absolutely no way he would pass on the chance to work with Eric. Let's just agree to his offer. He blurted out without a second of hesitation. Don't make your decision in haste, hero. At least think for a while. His mother expressed her concerns, sounding all worried. If she wanted then she could have talked with Eric by herself but since the matter concerned her son's future, she wanted him to think properly regarding that matter. She didn't want him to make his decisions in hurry regardless of the benefit of the offer. He understood her concerns and the meaning behind her words. She was only worried about him and his future. Okay mom, let's talk about the offer with him tomorrow in school. He mumbled while keeping his cool, locking eyes with her. Okay now that the matter is resolved, can we have breakfast? I'll get late for the work if this continues. His father blurted, wait for a second I'll go fetch the cups and plates. She then stood up from her chair and walked towards the drawer. After setting the utensils on the table, she began to serve the breakfast. There was nothing extravagant in the table. Just some rice, miso soup, fish and potato carrot stew. It was the type of breakfast most people in Japan would have for breakfast. Thank you for the food. The three of them prayed before eating. It was a customary tradition in Japan to pray for the food before digging in. As they finished their breakfast, his father stood up from his chair and left for his work in a hurry. While his mother started to wash the dishes. Mom, can you lend me some money today? I'm going to arcade with my friend. He asked for money from his mother. Even though he made a decent earning through NewTube, he let his parents handle his account. And the money from the NewTube would directly go to their bank account. Meaning he had no money under his name, despite being the owner of a successful NewTube channel. However his parents too had secretively saved the money from the NewTube under his name for his future use. And he wasn't aware of that as well. How much do you need? She asked. Just 10,000 yen, he replied. Huh, that much? She was shocked to hear that amount from a kid. After all 10,000 yen was equivalent to 68 United States dollars. And she was still paying him out of her pocket and not from his YouTube channel. Chapter 48 Repentance At first she was hesitant to provide him with such a large sum of money. But after convincing her for a while, she finally agreed to lend him the money. Here, don't spend it recklessly and only spend for your requirement. Try to save as much as you can. She nagged as she handed him the money. Thank you mom, I'll spend it wisely, he replied enthusiastically, and as soon as he got the money in his hands, he hurriedly rushed towards his room. As he sat beneath a giant tree to shade himself from the hot rays of sun, he took a peek at his watch. It was already 10.10 and yet there was no sign of Akashi's arrival. They had agreed to meet at exactly 10 a.m. at the community park. Hiro had reached the park even before the time they had agreed to meet. Having reached the park even before 10, he had been waiting for Akashi for almost half an hour. Just where the hell is that big moron? How can one be late in the time set by themselves? Hiro mumbled feeling all annoyed. Feeling restless, he took a peek at the sky above him to calm him down. Lumps of white clouds in different shapes and sizes were aimlessly floating in the vast blue sky. Buzzing noise of cicada and rising temperature of the surrounding was indicating the arrival of summer season. Cat, PFT ha 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 ha. He chuckled as he noticed a lump of cloud which resembled the face of a cat. She too used to make such stupid assumptions in the past whenever she witnessed a strange looking cloud. I guess I kinda picked her habit as well. I wonder what she's been up to. He mumbled as he began to reminisce his past upon witnessing the cat shaped cloud. I just hope that she's doing fine. Just as he was reminiscing his past, a gentle gust of warm breeze blew past him. He immediately closed his eyes as some of the leaves from the trees above started to fall down. Sorry for making you wait dude. While leaving the house, I got caught by grandpa. Akashi spoke in a state of breathlessness. Why were you caught by your grandpa? Did you do something mischievous? Hiro questioned while trying to open his eyes. As he opened his eyes, he found Akashi covered in sweat. He looked extremely exhausted and out of breath. Why do you look so tired? Did you run or something? Yeah I had to run away from him. He replied, gasping heavily. First off all, take a moment to breathe properly. Inhale, exhale. Akashi began to inhale and exhale deep breaths to stabilize his breathing. 
After few inhales and exhales, his breathing finally stabilized. Now tell me why did you need to run away from your grandpa? Hiro questioned as Akashi stabilized. His breathing. Did you steal his money or what? No it's not because of that reason. He just wanted to play shogi Japanese chess with me today. Well you could have come after finishing a game too. That way you wouldn't have to run away from him. Hiro mumbled. If only it were that simple. Once he starts to play, he won't stop until he feels satisfied. Akashi exasperated. Also I did actually steal about a 1000 yen from his coat. So you did steal money. Stealing is not a good thing Akashi. Hiro was really upset to find out about his misdeeds. I'll pay him back hundredfold when I make it as a pro. Akashi replied without an ounce of guilt. He wasn't even a bit remorseful towards his actions. No Akashi, you don't steal money. You steal once and it'll become a habit. So you're going to return back the money you stole from your grandpa to your grandpa. Hiro erupted. No matter the reasons, he didn't want his friend to take the path of thievery under any circumstances. Let's go to your house and give him back his money. You're also going to apologize to your grandpa for stealing from him. Okay I'll give him back his money and I'll also apologize to him. But can't I do it later? Like we're already here, so it would be kind of wasteful to go back again. Akashi began to make excuses. He wasn't willing to go with Hiro that very moment. No we'll head to arcade later. First we'll return him his money back. Quick, let's head to your house. Hiro sternly denied his request and forced him to lead him the way towards his house. After about 20 minutes of bus ride, they arrived at his house. It was a typical Japanese-style house made up of wood. I'm home, he yelled as he entered his house. Just then a lady in her 30s made her way towards the front door. Black, short hair which barely reached her shoulder hung freely as she walked towards the front door. While looking at Akashi with her black monolith eyes, she spoke. Why have you come back so soon? Didn't you say that you'd be going to arcade with your friend? I'll go after a while. Also this here is my friend Takahashi Hiro. Akashi introduced him to his mother. Hello Hiro, I'm Akashi's mom. As she introduced herself, she greeted him with a sweet smile in her face. The lady in front was none other than Akashi's mother. Hiro immediately bowed his head down and introduced himself to Akashi's mother. Hello Mrs. Nobara, I'm Takahashi Hiro. It's a pleasure to meet you. He introduced himself and greeted Akashi's mother while bowing his head. I know about you Hiro. Akashi speaks a lot about you. Hiro can do this, Hiro can do that. Whenever he starts to talk about you, he just won't stop until his mouth gets tired. She laughed as she began to reveal about Akashi's words about him. Mom, Akashi exasperated as she began to reveal his secrets. Okay, okay, come inside and have a sit. I'll bring you some watermelon. She invited them inside. No, no auntie, you don't have to do that auntie. We'll be gone in a while. Feeling all nervous, Hiro tried to refuse her hospitality. However she kept on insisting him to come inside and have something to eat. She wouldn't let him leave on empty stomach. Giving in to her insistence, he agreed to her offer. As they walked inside and his mother left their sight, he whispered on Akashi's ear. You remember right, you need to return his money and apologize to him. Yeah, yeah, Akashi hesitatingly nodded his head. They then headed towards the room at the left side of the hallway. Knock, knock, come inside. A deep and hoarse voice came from inside the room. As Akashi slid the door open, he witnessed Akashi's grandfather sitting in front of the sliding window, basking in the morning sun. His short, silver hair glowed ethereally as the rays of morning sun fell on top of it. With a slightly tanned skin, the wrinkles in his face and hands flowed like waves of sea. Despite his age, his brown eyes were still gleaming with vitality. As if he'd live for another 20 to 30 years, he looked very young for his age. No matter how many time I witness his appearance, he feels very young to me. If it weren't for his wrinkles and silver hair, people might mistake him for a 40 to 50 year old. He looks too young for his age. Hiro whispered as he witnessed the appearance of Akashi's grandfather. Would you believe me if I tell you that his real age is 84? Akashi whispered, huh 84? His eyes opened wide in shock, he couldn't believe Akashi's words. Even though he had seen his grandfather previously, he looked the exact same as the time when he took part in their first prefectural tournament finals against Rondon Elementary School. For this whole time, he never asked of his age and neither did Akashi ever mentioned about it. What are you two standing over there for? His grandfather spoke in his hoarse voice. They quickly walked towards him and sat with their legs folded. How have you been hero? 
It's been such a long time since I last saw you. He questioned him about his well-being. I heard that you won the national championship the other day. Congratulations for your triumph. And I'm sorry that I couldn't make it. Oh no, you don't have to be sorry grandpa. It's all my fault for never visiting you. So the one who should be apologizing should be me grandpa. I'm sorry grandpa. He bowed his head down and apologized to Akashi's grandfather for not visiting him. Even though they had been friends for so long, it was his first time visiting Akashi's house. And it was his first time meeting with his mother as well. Just like him Akashi had never visited his house as well. Although he had met with both of his parents. Oh no, no, you don't have to be sorry about it Hiro. Akashi's grandfather felt uncomfortable about Hiro's apology. Just then Akashi too bowed his head down and apologized, I'm sorry grandpa for stealing your money. Ha ha ha, I'm very glad that you've apologized to me for your misdeed. As Akashi bowed his head down and apologized to his grandfather, he burst out in laughter. I already knew about you stealing money from my coat's pocket. I just didn't want your father to hear about your misdeeds that's why I didn't react. But I'm really glad that you realized your mistake by your own. Grandpa actually, as he was about to say something, Hiro lightly pulled his t-shirt and stopped him from completing his sentence. Chapter 49 Dropping a Bomb as the sun was approaching the horizon, the sky was ablaze with the fire of the setting sun. And as the shadow of the house and the wall in front reached the place where they were playing shogi, he realized that he had spent his whole day at Akashi's house, playing shogi with his grandfather. Check, Hiro mumbled as he captured Akashi's grandfather's king and won the game. Well played, it's my lost. Akashi's grandfather admitted his defeat. It was his ninth victory. Having won nine times, he had also lost seven times. They had played a total of 16 games, each one more intense than the previous one. While they were playing shogi, Akashi had dozed off at a certain point of time. It's getting late grandpa, I need to head home now. He mumbled as he stretched his body which had gotten stiff after sitting at the same place for almost 9 hours. Yeah I think we need to call it a end for today. We'll play again some other days. He replied as he began to arrange the pieces. Just give me a minute, I'll wrap it up and I'll walk you to the bus stop. No grandpa, you must be, tired from playing all day. I'll go by myself, you can rest grandpa. He politely refused his offer and insisted him to take rest. As he put on his shoes, he bid his farewell to Akashi's family and headed home. Asterisk 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 asterisk. April 11, 2019. Chatter. Chatter. As he reached closer to his school, he heard chattering noise of people coming from the school. There was still some time left for the bell to ring. Groups of students were gathered in front of the entrance of school for some reasons. They must be waiting for Eric. Perhaps the news regarding Eric's arrival was leaked somehow. He wondered as he witnessed the crowd of students gathered in front of the entrance. Just as he made his way towards the entrance, he saw a familiar face among the crowd of students. That familiar face belonged to Principal Miyamoto Takumi. Here comes our champ, Principal Miyamoto exclaimed as he walked towards them with a wide grin on his face. Since Eric had told them that he'd be present in the school to discuss about the contract, his mother was accompanying him. The crowd of students roared in his praises as they witnessed his arrival. Good morning Mrs. Takahashi. As he walked closer to them, he greeted his mother. Good morning Mr. Miyamoto. She greeted him back. Sensei, why are you standing in front of the gate? Are you waiting for someone? Hiro questioned. Indeed I'm waiting for someone. And that someone happens to be you. I'll fill you with the details later. But first we need to go somewhere. Principal Miyamoto exclaimed sounding all excited. Before he could speak anything else, Principal Miyamoto grabbed his hands and began to lead the way. He was left dumbfounded by Principal Miyamoto's strange behavior. Usually he was the type of person who would maintain his cool under any circumstances. But that day he seemed a little different. After passing through the crowd of students, he led them towards the pitch. Even more students were gathered in the sidelines of the pitch than in front of the entrance. He tried to see past those students gathered in front of the pitch, but he couldn't see anything. THR students in front obstructed his vision. Everyone move aside, move aside, Principal Miyamoto yelled as he made his way towards the pitch. Hearing his voice, everybody began to make way for them. Just as he entered the pitch, he noticed his teammates gathered in the pitch. Along with his teammates, several other local reporters were also present in the pitch. Witnessing the reporters with their cameras and microphones, he could somewhat guess about the situation unfolding in front of his eyes. I see, so this is the reason behind his strange behaviors. 
He's probably exited for the interview. He thought as he witnessed the flock of reporters in front of him. Yo, you're here. Look at our principal. He's getting overly excited for the interview. As if it was his first time getting interviewed. Ha ha ha. Akashi chuckled. But why did he gather all of us for the interview? Well I heard that reporters wanted to take a picture of all of us together with the trophy for the cover photo. Also I'm not sure if it's true or not, I heard that somebody from Europe is coming today. Akashi whispered while trying to conceal his voice as much as he could. Okay we're ready to shoot. A man wearing a baseball cap yelled. Ding, dong, just then the chime of the bell sounded indicating the starting of the school. And as the bell sounded Principal Miyamoto began to chase the students towards their respective classes. Soon the crowd dissipated as the students made their way towards their classes. With the dissipation of the crowd, the noise dissipated as well. And the interview began to take place in full swing. We all know that Tokushima Prefecture was previously dominated by the likes of Karasuno Elementary School and Rondon Elementary School. But out of nowhere a new team emerged and challenged their authority. So we'd like to know how you created such a dominant team. Did you plan it from a long time ago or did it just happen out of blue? The reporters began to question the principal. We did indeed plan for this from a long time ago. But it wasn't me who created this team. It's all thanks to our scout Sakamoto and coaching staffs. If not for our excellent scout, we would have never managed to create this incredible team. So I want to thank our scout and coaching staffs for building such an incredible team. Thank you. Principal Miyamoto took a peek at Sakamoto-san and Coach Miura who were standing beside him and bowed his head as he thanked them. Assistant coach Honda had left the team that year. He was preparing himself for the S-Class license exam. Thank you for your words Principal Miyamoto. So was it Sakamoto-san who managed to scout Takahashi Hiro? The reporter continued with his question. Yes indeed it was Sakamoto-san who scouted Hiro. For that I would like to thank him once again. Thank you Sakamoto-san. This school owes a lot to you. Principal Miyamoto thanked Sakamoto once again for scouting Hiro. The interview was going pretty smoothly. Just then suddenly a voice from the background distracted them. The voice belonged to the guard. No sir, you can't go over there sir. The guard was seen struggling to stop a foreigner from entering the pitch. What's happening over there? As the noise became vivid, the reporters turned their gazes towards the commotion taking place at the sidelines. What's happening over there? Coach Miura yelled as he turned his attention towards the commotion. Sir, this foreigner is trying to invade the pitch. I keep telling him that the pitch is off limit for the time being, but he doesn't listen to me. He keeps on telling me that he was invited by Principal Miyamoto. And he's forcefully trying to invade the pitch. The guard replied while trying to stop Eric from entering the pitch. Let him go, I'm the one who invited him. Principal Miyamoto yelled, you've heard it from him now. So can you let me go now? Eric mumbled goofily. Upon hearing the words of Principal Miyamoto, he immediately released Eric from his grasp. Who's that foreigner Principal Miyamoto? The reporters and the coaching staff questioned as they witnessed the sight of Eric. Since Eric was still a small-time agent, not many people knew about him yet. As of now, even in his home country only a handful of people knew about his identity. So the rumors were indeed true. He was the rumored European. Akashi mumbled in awe as he witnessed the sight of Eric. Except Hiro, Momo and Principal Miyamoto, everybody else were unaware of his identity. Some thought of him as a foreigner scout, some thought of him as a foreign coach, some thought of him as a foreign player and some even thought of him as some kind of celebrity from foreign land. Everybody had a different impression of Eric. However nobody thought of him as an agent. Since in football only the players and the coaches are well known among the masses. Nobody thought of him as an agent. Even though agents, owners and coaching staffs other the coaches are an important part of the football, they aren't as famous as the players and coaches. Except few exceptional agents and owners, it's likely that most people wouldn't even know the name of the agent of their favorite players. He's one of the agent from Europe. Principal Miyamoto cheerfully exclaimed, You may have heard players like Jude Bellingham and Calvin Phillips who plays for teams like Birmingham and Leeds United in the second division league of English football. He's the one who manages them. And he has shown great interest in one of our talented player. Usually he doesn't sign Asian players but this player had piqued his interest. And he's here to sign him. As the principal announced such a shocking statement, the reporters froze in their places. Their eyes bulging, they were left speechless. Chapter 50 Agent Secured As Principal Miyamoto introduced Eric, everybody looked at him with their eyes wide open. They were having hard time to believe the words that came out from his mouth. 
So that's how you'll be going to use my name, huh? No wonder you told me to come at this moment. Eric smiled cheekily as he took a peek at Principal Miyamoto's face. In that moment Eric realized that beneath that cheerful and sincere face of Principal Miyamoto, there lied a cunning businessman. Principal Miyamoto had intentionally set their time of meeting at the time of interview, so that those two moments would overlap with each other and their meeting would be witnessed by the reporters. He had carefully devised his plan to promote the name of Eric to increase the reputation of his school. He wanted to make use of the reporters to advertise his school's name along with Eric without needing to pay extra money for the advertisement. It was like killing two birds with one stone. Indeed I'm interested in one of their players. And I'm sure everybody could already guess the player I'm talking about. Although the deal hasn't been finalized yet. I indeed am interested in that player. Without concealing his interests, Eric cheerfully revealed his intentions in front of the reporters. He was as transparent as crystal clear water. As he announced his intentions, the reporters began to note his statement and began to click his photos. They wouldn't let such a golden opportunity to slip away from their hands. I'm sure he's talking about you. Akashi mumbled as he lightly pulled Hiro's shirt. Did you know about this already? Ah yeah, he called my mom yesterday. Hiro replied in a casual tone with a stoic face. Huh, and you didn't even tell me. As he heard that statement from Hiro, he looked at him with his eyes wide open. He looked at him in a way as if he had hidden from him that he was some kind of superhero. Hiro however showed no change in his facial expressions. Well I mean the deal hasn't been finalized yet. And also you do remember that you dosed off right. Ha ha, yeah, Akashi laughed awkwardly, but still you could have. Just as he was about to speak something, Coach Miura called out all the players to gather in front of the trophy. As the players gathered in front of the trophy, the reporters began to click their pictures. With that photo session, the interview came to an end and Coach Miura dismissed all the players. Everybody could go to their classes, except Hiro. Principal Miyamoto wants to discuss something with you, so you stay back and everyone else, head to your classroom. Fill me the details about the deal later in the evening training session. Akashi mumbled as he left towards his classroom. The players then began to disperse. Except Hiro, all of them started to walk towards their classroom. It was fun working with you Principal Miyamoto. A reporter cheerfully exclaimed as he shook hands with Principal Miyamoto. After exchanging few words and compliments, the reporters began to head out as well. This is a banger. I never expected to get such an amazing content for our channel. The reporters shared their happiness among each other as they made their way out of the pitch. Now then, shall we head to my office? Principal Miyamoto inquired while looking at Hiro and Eric, nice to meet you Mrs. Takahashi. I know I've introduced myself already but please allow me to introduce myself once again. I'm Eric Parker, the guy who's interested in signing your son. Even though he had already introduced himself the day before, during the phone call but despite that he introduced himself, once again. Nice to meet you too Mr. Parker. I'm Hiro's mom, Takahashi Momo. I'm sure I've already expressed my intentions. But let me repeat it again. Would you like to sign a deal with me for your son Mrs. Takahashi? As Eric expressed his desire to sign Hiro, his mother took a peek at Hiro's face. Hiro slightly nodded his head giving her his approval. Thank you Mr. Parker for showing such a great interest in my son. And I'm sure that you must have seen something in him, that's why you're so eager to sign him. But as a mother, I still can't help but worry about his well-being. So before signing the contract we'd like to know your intentions moving forward. We'd also like to know how you'll help him improve going forward. Sounding all worried, she expressed her concerns without holding back anything. I understand Mrs. Takahashi. As his mother, your concerns are justifiable. And I'd be happy to clear your doubts. You can ask me anything you are worried about. Eric assured her that he'd be willing to answer all her questions and clear all her doubts. And as such she took up on his offer and began to question him. After talking for a while, she was convinced to sign the contract. Eric had cleared all her doubts and given her satiable answers. His words convinced her to sign the contract. The duration of the contract was about 10 years and Eric would only take a meager commission fee of 8% for his service. And he had also included a special clause which stated that he would only take commission fee from him after he gets a transfer offer from Europe. If somehow he'd fail to get a transfer to Europe, he wouldn't charge them even a penny for his service. Meaning he would provide his service free of cost for the time being. The contract was totally in their favor and they had nothing to lose. Thus without wasting time any further, they immediately signed the contract. 
With his mother acting as his benefactor, Hiro signed the contract. Pleased to have you on board Hiro. Let's give our best. Eric laughed heartily as he greeted Hiro. Even though the contract was totally in favor of Hiro, Eric seemed really happy to sign him. As if he had gotten his hands on a diamond in rough, he was extremely excited to strike a deal with Hiro. You're gonna be the next big thing in Asia. Eric claimed as he locked his eyes with Hiro. Ha ha, thank you for believing in me. But I'm not deserving of such praises. Hiro quickly rolled his eyes away from him and replied awkwardly. Eric's words made him uncomfortable. Ding, the host has completed the quest. A muscle-enhancing elixir has been awarded to the host for the completion of the quest. Please head to the inventory tab to know more about the elixir. As he signed the contract with Eric, the system notified him about the completion of the quest. The system had provided him with the quest to impress Eric and strike a deal with him. I've been really curious about this muscle-enhancing elixir from the time it showed in system. Finally I can get my hands on it. Does it improve my muscle density or flexibility? I need to inspect it thoroughly later in the night. He pondered as he heard the notification from the system. Knock, knock, just as they were conversing with each other, somebody knocked the door. Who is it? Principal Miyamoto yelled. Sir, it's me Saizuka. There's a call from the director of NBC channel. He wants to discuss something. With you, the one who knocked the door was Saizuka Sensei, the personal assistant of Principal Miyamoto. Excuse me for a while. I'll need to attend that call. You guys keep on talking. I'll be back in a while. Principal Miyamoto spoke as he made his way out of his office. So what will you do after elementary school hero? Will you be joining a middle school team or will you join a youth team? Eric inquired. Well, I haven't given much thought about it yet. Hiro replied. Do you want to hear my opinion hero? Concerned about his indecision, Eric questioned. Without uttering a single word, he nodded his head. You should probably join a youth team. I know it sounds a bit ridiculous but look at it this way. At youth team though you'll still need to attend school, you can focus more on football. And I'm sure it'll be more beneficial to you if you join an academy. You could hone your skills and also experience the life of a pro. You could prepare yourself for the challenges you'll face moving forward. Eric suggested him to join a youth team rather than a middle school team. Young players in Europe join football academies as early as they can run, that's why they develop into world-class players. I'm not pressuring you to join an academy too but I believe it'll be more beneficial to your career if you join a youth team instead of a school team. So do give it some thought hero. Upon listening to Eric, he started to ponder. He started to think about the pros and cons of joining a youth team instead of a middle school team. Chapter 51 Equal Exchange Later in the night of that day, after finishing dinner and brushing his teeth, he was sitting at his study table pondering over the suggestions made by Eric. With the lights turned off, he was sitting all by himself. As he rested his head atop his study table, he lazily rolled his eyes outside the window. The clear night sky was aglow with the bright city lights. Even though he resided in the outskirts of the city, he couldn't avoid the bright lights coming from the city. While looking at the luminescent moon atop the city, he revealed a deep sigh. Sigh, maybe I should take up on his suggestion and join an academy. I've already fulfilled one of my dream of lifting the national trophy. And my growth has kinda become stagnant too. Maybe the time has come for me to accept a new challenge and embark on a new journey. He thought while staring at the moon. Things have really changed in this life. I've lifted the national trophy, signed a professional contract with an agent from Europe and amassed quite a bit of wealth too. And all of it were possible only because of system and my choices. If I would have followed the same choices as in my previous life. Maybe I would have been in the same situation as I was in my previous life. So yeah I've made my decision. I'll join a youth team. He contemplated and made his decision after analyzing his success in his present life. As he made up his mind to join a professional youth team instead of a middle school team, he lifted his head up and rose up from his chair. Just as he was about to head to his bed, a sudden thought flashed in his mind. He remembered something, ah, yeah, system, there was a reward for the completion of the quest. How could I forget about it? As he remembered about the reward from the earlier quest, he again pulled the chair and sat down. System activate. Just as he mumbled, the holographic blue screen of the system appeared in front of his eyes, once again. Basic information. Name. Takahashi Hiro. Age. 10 years old. Weight. 42 kilograms. Height. 4 feet 7 inch. Potential. SSS. Attribute point. 103. Roulette tickets. 0. 
skills, focus, perseverance, copy talents, Roberto Carlos's, free kick, title, master of the talent copying system, regressor, one who possess ethereal talent, attributes, physical, 41 one hundredths grade, C, dribbling, 78 one hundredths grade, B plus, pace, 52 one hundredths grade, C plus, passing, 63 one hundredths grade, B, shooting, 61 one hundredths grade, B, defending, 34 one hundredths grade, D plus, mentality, 57 one hundredths grade, C plus, IQ, 77 one hundredths grade, B plus, overall grade, B, witnessing his stats, he thought to himself, indeed my growth has remained quite the same for a long time. Although with this stat I could probably play in a youth team and maybe I could even play in lower division of professional leagues. While looking at his stats, he completely forgot about the fact that he was still a child. And even though his stats were pretty amazing, the world was filled with infinite variables. But I'm not here to analyze my stats. Today I'm here to look at my reward from previous quest. Let's see what amazing thing did we get from the system. While rubbing his palm against each other, he looked at the system with his greedy eyes and revealed a crooked smile on his face. Now where is the inventory tab? Unable to find the inventory tab, he began to scroll through the system in search of inventory tab. Finally after scrolling for a while, his eyes landed on an icon which resembled a chest. Since it looks like a chest, maybe it's the inventory tab that I'm searching for. He muttered as he curiously clicked the chest icon. Just as he clicked the icon, the system redirected him to the inventory. His inventory consisted of 10 slots. There were 2 slots in the first row, 2 in the second, 2 in the third, 2 in the fourth and 2 in the fifth. Altogether there were 5 rows with 2 columns. His inventory was almost empty with only first slot occupied. And that slot was occupied by the muscle enhancing elixir. Just when I thought that I figured out the working mechanism of the system it gets even more complex. Like does it update automatically or what? He mumbled as he found the inventory tab. He then clicked on the first slot. As he clicked on the first slot, suddenly a picture of round glass bottle with blue liquid in it became visible. The transparent glass bottle resembled a bottle of perfume. Beneath the picture, there were some texts written on it, which read as such. Muscle enhancing elixir. Effects. Increases muscle density and slightly increases recovery rate. Additional effect. Plus 5 physical stat point and plus 3 pace stat point. Note. This is a one-time use item and it will expire in a week's time. Hence it suggested that host should consume it as soon as possible. Use. Leave. Damn. Plus 5 physical stat points and plus 3 pace stat points. I could hardly raise 10 points my busting my ass on training for about a year. And this elixir is providing me 8 stat points from a single consumption. His voice shook as he read the description of the item. He couldn't believe his eyes that the item could grant him about a year's worth stats in one single consumption. I really don't know what to make of this situation. Just when did the system start being so generous? He wondered as he witnessed the benefits of the item provided by the system. Since there's a time limit, I should probably consume it right away. He immediately pressed on the use option to consume the item. Just as he pressed on the use option, the item disappeared from the slot of inventory. For three seconds nothing happened aside from the disappearance of the item from the slot of the inventory. But after three seconds passed, his body temperature suddenly started to rise and he began to sweat profusely. What's this? Why am I feeling so hot all of a sudden? He mumbled as he began to sweat profusely out of nowhere. Along with the rise in body temperature, he began to feel excruciating pain all over his body. His muscles started to convulse. Huff, huff, arg, why does it feel like my body's crumbling? I guess the item is taking its effect. Seems like the benefits comes with a price. But I can handle this much pain. No pain no gain. While trying to endure the pain, he revealed a cheeky smile as if he was prepared to endure the pain. At first the pain was tolerable but as the time passed it began to intensify. However he was still somehow holding his ground and enduring the pain. But the pain kept on intensifying. Unable to endure the pain, he fell down from his chair. Still unwilling to let out a single scream, he clenched his fist tightly and tried to endure the pain by gritting his teeth. But just like how a milk would spill after heating it for a while, he was also reaching his limit. After all there's only so much pain a human could handle. Just as he was about to scream, he heard something. Abnormal activity detected. The system will forcibly put the host on mute until the end of the absorption process. Ah, 
He screamed in agony but no sound came from his mouth. As the intolerable pain spread it all over his body, he felt like he's getting struck by needles all over his body. But since his voice was put on a mute, no matter how much he screamed not even a single word came out from his mouth. However that didn't meant that he didn't feel any pain at all. Unable to endure the pain, he was on the verge of losing consciousness. But somehow he persevered through the situation and endured the pain. Finally after some time the pain started to recede and he felt some relief. And as the pain dissipated, he stopped his screams and started to regain his strength. His voice returned back to normal as well. After going through that horrible experience, he tried to rise up. While taking the support of the floor and the chair, he struggled to raise his body from the floor. However he was still too weak to stand straight. And thus, he leaned his back against the chair to prevent his body from falling down. As he leaned his back against the chair, he began to stare blankly at the posters in the wall in front. For a moment he couldn't think of anything. For some inexplicable reason his mind went completely blank for a while. And as he regained back his strength and returned to his normal self, he tried to stand straight on his legs. Arg, what in the Lord's name happened just now? He mumbled softly as he tried to reason with himself. So it's not easy to obtain a year's worth of stat in one single moment huh? So to get a year's worth stat in a single sitting, you'd have to suffer year's worth pain in one sitting as well. It's a fair trade, but I'm not sure if I want to go through it again. Chapter 52 Akashi's Crush June 19, 2019, at around 8.30 a.m., Hiro arrived at his school all by himself. Because of some urgent work, his mother had to leave in a hurry that day. And thus, she couldn't accompany him all the way to the school. Hence she dropped him off at a certain distance away from the school and left in a hurry. Usually he'd always be late for school because of his early morning nap after the morning workout. But that day because of his mother's work, she had rushed him to the school quite early in the morning. Just as he was about to reach the school gate, he heard a familiar voice calling out his name from behind him. Wondering who was calling him so early in the morning, he turned his head around to see the person who was calling him. As he turned around, he noticed Akashi sprinting towards him while shouting his name. Witnessing his appearance, Hiro paused midway and waited for him to catch up to him. It didn't take Akashi that long to reach him. He immediately caught up to him in a matter of some seconds. After reaching him, he paused for a while and began to pant heavily. For a while he couldn't speak anything because of his earlier sprint. And as his breathing stabilized, he lifted his head up and stretched his arms towards Hiro. He then rested his arms on top of Hiro's shoulder and looked at him as if he was about to do something totally idiotic. Hiro didn't like the look on his face. What's this moron going to do now? Hiro wondered as he puzzlingly casted his glance at Akashi's face. He was puzzled by the look on his face. Akashi then looked him in the eyes and revealed a crooked smile. The king of Ukami Elementary School's football team has graced us with his presence so early in the morning today. Has the sun risen from the west today? As he mumbled, he turned his gaze towards the direction of the sun. The sun's shining brilliantly and it hasn't risen from west too. So that means that the day of prophecy has finally descended upon us. And since his majesty has graced us with his presence so early in the morning, it's only right for us peasants to bow their head and show respect to his majesty. Akashi then bowed his head down while placing his right hand beneath his chest. Please accept this humble peasant's greetings your majesty. He exclaimed in a loud voice. While Akashi was performing his idiotic role play, Hiro began to vigorously shake his head. Akashi's idiotic act was making him uncomfortable. Fortunately nobody was present around there to witness Akashi's embarrassing role play. Now, stop with this ridiculous role play Akashi. He exasperated as he tried to lift his head up. Just at that moment, out of nowhere Ichiji Ryu made his appearance. Although he was still far from them, he witnessed that ridiculous role play of Akashi. Maybe both of them are actually a part of a gang. And I guess Hiro Senpei is the leader of that gang. So he was only trying to conceal his identity by misguiding me back then when I asked him if Akashi Senpei belonged to a gang. Ryu's voice shook as he witnessed the sight in front of him. Witnessing the sight of Akashi bowing his head in front of Hiro, he froze in his place and began to step back. Just then Hiro noticed Ryu. As he noticed Ryu, he forcibly lifted Akashi's head up and called out for Ryu. Ryu, where are you going? The school's this way you know. Hiro yelled while pointing at school. Upon getting called by Hiro, a shiver ran down his spine. He then nervously lifted his head up and faced Hiro. Now what should I tell him? I don't want to face him. He looks so scary right now. 
he began to have weird thoughts about Hiro. After witnessing that incident, he began to imagine Hiro as some kind of boss of a gang who only pretended to be nice. Because of the earlier incident with Akashi, he started to get anxious while facing Hiro. And even though Hiro only asked him simple questions, he misinterpreted them in a negative way. From his perspective, Hiro's words read as such. Where are you going without showing your respect to me? Now accompany me to school or else you'll get beaten. Paralyzed by the fear of getting beaten by Hiro inside his head, he froze in his place. While rolling his eyes here and there, he began to think of excuses to avoid Hiro. I, I, I just drew, pp. Dot eat my money. So, I, was Jew, ss, t, go, e, n, n, g back to re, dot try, dot eve, it. He stammered while replying, oh, okay, do you want my help? Hiro expressed his desire to help him. Hearing Hiro's reply, Ryu shook his head and immediately ran away. Why is he acting so strange? Hiro mumbled as he witnessed Ryu's weird behavior. I bet he thinks you're some of kind of boss of a gang. Ha ha ha. Akashi who was standing beside him chuckled. And whose fault is it? Hiro intoned as he rolled his eyes towards Akashi and gave him a cold stare. Ha ha ha. Sorry about that. Akashi goofily apologized. Sigh. Whatever. I'll clear his doubts later in the evening training. Now let's head inside. Hiro revealed a deep sigh and shrugged off Akashi's behavior. Chatter. Chatter. As they headed inside the school, they noticed many students gathered in front of the notice board. What's happening over there? Confused by the commotion taking place in front of him, he questioned. Maybe they're waiting for his majesty's arrival. Ha ha ha. Akashi chuckled. Yeah, yeah. Now stop with your jokes or else I'll tell Sumi Nanami that you have a crush on her. No, please don't do that. I'll stop. I'll stop it right away. So please don't do that. Akashi began to beg as Hiro mentioned him about revealing his secret to Sumi Nanami. Sumi Nanami was the student council president of Ukami Elementary School. With long straight black hair and upturned eyes with black pupil, she always wore a gentle smile on her face. Always greeting everybody with a smile, she was a social butterfly who was well liked by everyone at the school. While they were goofing around, suddenly from behind them Sumi Nanami made her appearance. About 4 feet 3 inches tall with a slender figure, she was a year older than him. Her milky white skin complemented her small nose and glossy red lips. Especially the bangs above her eyes which covered her forehead further highlighted her beauty. A combination of pleasant personality with an ethereally beautiful face, she was very famous in their school. Along with Hiro, she was one of the two personalities who were extremely famous throughout Ukami Elementary School. Good morning Hiro. She greeted him with a smile on her face. Just as she made her appearance, Akashi went completely silent. With his cheeks turning red, he stood straight with his chest puffed out. Oh, it's you Nanami. Good morning. Hiro casually greeted her back without putting any emphasis on his words. You have arrived quite early today Hiro. She began to strike a conversation with him in her soft voice. Yeah, he gave her one word answer and tried to shrug her off. Because both of them were well-known personalities in their school, they had encountered each other several times in the past. And Nanami being an extrovert always tried to converse with him whenever she encountered him. At first Hiro tried to ignore her as much as possible, but no matter how much he tried to ignore her, she wouldn't stop trying to befriend him. And thus because of her continuous pestering, he befriended her thinking that she would stop after he agreed to her request. But on the contrary, she started to blabber even more. While she was trying to converse with him, Akashi began to poke him. Ah, Nanami, this here is my friend Nobara Akashi. Hiro introduced Akashi to Nanami. Oh, hello, aren't you the defender of our school's football team? She exclaimed as she tried to recognize his face. Yes, indeed, I'm the defender of our school's football team. I didn't know that you knew about me. Akashi intoned while revealing a nervous smile on his face. How would I not know you when you're always running around Hiro? She thought to herself while curling her lips inside her mind. However on the outside, she didn't let go of her smile. How could I not know the defender who puts his life on the line to protect our team's goal? Hearing such praises from his crush, Akashi's heart rate spiked as he began to visualize the two of them going out on dates together. He was thrilled to hear such praises from his crush. He felt like he was over the moon. By the way, what's happening over there? Hiro interrupted. As he interrupted Akashi's conversation with his crush, Akashi began to stare at him with his eyes wide open. It's just that the news regarding the transfer of Takafusa Kubo to the world-renowned club, 
Real Madrid, has been pasted on the notice board. That's why everybody's gathered there to read the news. Seems like the prophecy was meant for someone else. Akashi whispered in delirium as he heard the news from Sumi Nanami. Chapter 53 New Era With the transfer of Takafusa Kubo to Real Madrid, changes were taking place in Japanese football. Just a year before Vissel Kobe, a professional football club which played in Japanese League One had secured the signature of one of the greatest midfielder in the world. It had managed to sign Andres Iniesta from Barcelona. Also at that same year in 2018's World Cup, Japanese men's national team had performed really well in the tournament. Even though they had been placed in the group with the likes of Colombia, Senegal and Poland, they had managed to defeat Colombia, a country from South America which performed really well in the previous World Cup. With James Rodriguez winning the Golden Boot, they had managed to reach quarter-finals of the World Cup 2014. Japanese team also managed to pull out a draw against Senegal, one of the powerhouse football nation of African continent. However they fell short against Poland as they suffered a narrow defeat of 1-0. Even so, they still managed to secure a spot on the round of 16 by placing second in their group. While both Senegal and Japan were tied in score points, they managed to place above Senegal on overall goal difference and barely clenched the second spot in their group. In round of 16 they faced against Belgium, the team which was ranked first in FIFA men's team ranking that year. With all the players from its golden generation being at their absolute peak, they were one of the favourites to win the tournament. Belgium with the likes of Lukaku, Eden Azar, Thibaut Courtois, Kevin De Bruyne and many other world-class players was a team packed with stars. Even so, they held their ground against that star-packed team of Belgium and demonstrated a spectacular game worthy of praises. However they still couldn't pull up a victory against that star-packed team of Belgium and suffered a defeat of 3-2. And just like that their journey in 2018 World Cup came to an end. And even though their journey came to an end that year, everybody could see that football was developing rapidly in Japan. As Nanami Sumi broke the news regarding the transfer of Takafusa Kubo to Real Madrid, something clicked in him. I must make my decision today as well. Some months ago, Eric had notified him about the interests from several youth teams from all over Japan. However he had been delaying his decision since he still had more than a year left before he could graduate from elementary school. But now that the tides were getting stronger, he'd have to either jump on board or get left behind. And if he wanted to accomplish his goals, he couldn't afford to stay still. While thinking about the changes taking place in Japanese football, he had been staring blankly at the ground beneath his feet. Hero, Hero. Upon seeing him staring blankly at the ground for a long time, Nanami began to call his name. As she called his name, he abruptly lifted his head up and turned his gaze towards her. Her brows drawn together, she began to ask questions him as she moved closer to him. Are you not feeling well Hiro? Her words brought him back to his senses. Ah, yeah, I'm alright. He took a step back and blurted out as he regained back his senses. She then, paused her movement as she noticed him stepping back. Oh okay, she mumbled and retracted her step. Nanami, Saizuka sensei is looking for you. A female student with glasses who came out nowhere exclaimed as she noticed Nanami conversing with Hiro and Akashi. Wait for a minute, I'll go to her office right away. She intoned, I'll have to leave for now. So let's continue our conversation some other times. Well then, it was nice talking to you Hiro-kun, Nobara-kun. She wished them well while revealing a gentle smile in her face and left the scene. And as soon as she left, Akashi who had been silent for a long time, suddenly opened his mouth. Man, there's something really magical in her smile. Whenever she smiles, my heart starts to beat faster. I just can't stop looking at her. Akashi in tone sounding all excited. Yeah, yeah, now let's head to class. He couldn't care less about her smile or her beauty. All he cared about was improving himself and achieving his goals. Later at that night, he was sitting all by himself at his study table scribbling something on a sheet of paper. In that sheet of paper names of several teams were written in it. The names of written on the paper read as such. Vissel Kobe, Yokohama F. Marinos, FC Tokyo, Urawa Red Diamonds, Kashima Antlers, Cerezo Osaka, Gamba Osaka and Kawasaki Frontale. If I want to improve myself and debut early, this are the teams I should chose. He contemplated as he looked at the list of teams he prepared. I'll only be 12 years old by the time I graduate elementary school. And because of that, they might place me in U15 category instead of U18. And in U15 category the previous year's winner was FC Tokyo. 
However Kashima Antlers also managed to reach the final in the previous year's U18 category. Quote, also if I join Kawasaki Frontale, I might even get to play with Kaoru Mitoma for a brief moment. And if I join Vissel Kobe, I might get to play with Iniesta too. Damn every team looks promising. He rubbed his hair with both of his hands as he tried to choose the team he should join to elevate his career further. Even though he was scouted by most of the teams, not everyone granted him direct entry in their club. Some of them had placed some conditions as well. They had placed a condition that required him to pass their trials if he wanted to enroll in their academy. Arg, what should I do? Unable to decide on the team, he kept on staring at the list he prepared. Feeling restless, he hopped on his bed. With his face facing towards the ceiling, he held the list above his head. Kawasaki Frontale and Vissel Kobe looks the more promising option. But those teams are already packed with stars and I'm not sure if I'll even get to play among such conditions. So I should probably look for the team where I can get decent playing minutes. He mumbled as he began to weigh the pros and cons of joining the top flight team. But no, I've promised myself that I won't run away from challenges. If I don't get playing minutes for being new then I'll just have to demonstrate my skills and earn myself a spot in the starting 11. His eyes glowed with determination as he clenched his fist. Success is earned not granted. However while feeling motivated, he completely forgot that he was holding the list with the name of the teams in his hands. As he clenched his fist tightly, he crushed the list in his hands. Ah, I completely forgot about the list. He mumbled as he began to retrieve the list back to normal. If I'm gonna join a team then I'm gonna join the best one. Yes I've made my decision, I'll give Eric the name of five clubs that I want to join. And I'm sure he can discuss with the clubs and find out the best one for me. Let's leave the work of pros to pros. Saying such, he circled the name of five clubs from the list and stored the list inside his drawer. I'll have to work more harder now. Since I have enough points to upgrade the system, I should probably upgrade the system as well. That way I can gain more resources from the system and I can even unlock more features of the system. So it's decided I'll upgrade the system too. He mumbled as he began to think of upgrading the system. Early in the morning as he woke up from his sleep, he thought of calling Eric. But then again, he remembered that Eric was no longer in Japan. Eric had already departed for England after few days from the day of the contract signing. And since Eric was in England at that moment, there was a time difference of about 9 hours between the two countries. With Japan being 9 hours ahead of England, calling him that early in the morning meant disturbing Eric's sleep by calling him at the middle of the night. And thus he refrained himself from calling Eric early in the morning and decided to call him later in the night. What time would it be in England right now? Since we have a 9 hour time difference and it's 5 am here, it's probably only 8 pm over there right now. But knowing Eric he's probably asleep at this moment. Since Eric started his day early in the morning, he used to sleep before 9 every day if there wasn't any work that required his attention. Chapter 54 Conversation June 20, 2019, London, England, inside a neat and tidy spacious room at the third floor of a five-storied building in Baker Street, Eric was seen walking back and forth while going through some kind of documents. Flipping page after page, he was carefully reading each page of documents from the bundle of documents he held in his hands. Occasionally he would stop at his immaculate office table to take a sip from the cup of hot coffee placed atop his table. His unusual action continued for a while. Just as he finished reading the final page of the document from the bundle of documents which he held in his hand, he stopped at his table and placed the documents atop the table. Just then as he was about to sit on the chair beside the table, he heard a knocking sound from the door in front of his work table. Knock, knock, yes, come in, he mumbled as he sat down in his chair. Eric the first heard that you wanted to see me. A dark-skinned individual with a short wavy hair spoke as he opened the door. Yes Lucas, I've got something to discuss with you. Come have a seat. The individual with short wavy hair who walked inside his office was Lucas Silva. A 26-year-old Brazilian player who played as a defensive midfielder for the English club Fulham in the EFL Championship. Lucas was slightly taller than average people with the height of 6 feet 2 inches. Weighing almost 75 kilograms, he had a very well-toned muscular body. Dressed in shorts and black nylon t-shirt, his neatly trimmed beard gave him a handsome manly appearance. However his black t-shirt could hardly conceal his robust muscles underneath. As impressive as his upper body muscles were, his lower body muscles were even more amazing. Overall Lucas Silva was a muscular, dark-skinned Brazilian with a robust body and handsome appearance. 
As Lucas sat in the sofa placed in front of the table, Eric revealed a grin on his face. I've got a good news for you Lucas. Crystal Palace is showing great interest in you Lucas and they want to sign you. While resting his hands atop the table, he looked Lucas in his eyes and told him about the interest from Crystal Palace. That's some great news Eric. But what about Fulham, have they given the green light for further discussion? As happy as he was to get an offer from Crystal Palace, he was more concerned about the decision of his present club. Without their approval, the transfer would have been really hard to pull off. And he couldn't even pressure the club because of his love for the club. Even though his contract was expiring within a year, he wanted to leave the club on positive terms. He didn't want to leave the club in which he played for three seasons on bad terms. About that, I've scheduled a meeting with the sports director of the club later in the evening. But I've heard from Crystal Palace that it's been already about a week since they submitted their offer for the transfer. However they still haven't heard anything from Fulham. But you don't have to worry about it Lucas. I'll figure out something and I'll definitely pull off this transfer. Since his contract was nearing its expiration, the club had tried to extend their contract with him. However Lucas wanted to leave the club and look for new challenges. And Eric had clearly told them about Lucas's desire to leave the club about some months ago. And he had requested the club to put him on transfer or else he'll have to leave for free. However the club was reluctant to let go of one of its star performer. They wanted to extend Lucas's contract and tie him with the club for another three-quarter seasons. Ring, ring, ring. While he was talking to Lucas, he was interrupted by the ring on his phone. Give me a minute Lucas. He intoned as he stretched his hands inside his pocket and took his smartphone out. Despite having a telephone installed in his office, he had also provided his private number to handful of peoples to call him privately when needed. And among those handful of peoples, one was Hero. Oh it's Hero, Eric exclaimed with a wide smile on his face as he noticed the number which was calling him. Hello, Eric speaking, hello Eric, it's me Hero, I know it's you, I've saved your number in my phone. Eric mumbled while leaning back on his chair. Oh, are you free right now? I've got something to discuss with you. Hero asked Eric if he was busy at that moment. Wait a moment, Eric replied as he lifted himself. He then casted a glance at Lucas and spoke, Lucas, can you wait until I hang up this call? Lucas simply nodded his head and agreed to his request without a bit of hesitation. Yeah, I'm free, so tell me what are you going to talk about? I've decided to join a professional youth team but I can't decide which club to join. So would you lend me a hand regarding that matter? Without beating around the bush, Hero exclaimed his desire bluntly. He wanted Eric to help him with the selection of club that would be suitable to him. Yes, why not? Have you picked the teams you'd like to join or do I have to pick it for you? Eric inquired. No, no, you don't have to do that much Eric. I've already prepared a list of five clubs. So I just want you to help me to select a club among those five clubs that would fit my playstyle. Hero requested. Oh okay, then go on, tell me the name of those five clubs. I'll look into them and provide you with an answer in about two hours. As Eric agreed to his request, Hero opened his drawer and pulled out the list he had prepared the previous night. Now I'm going to tell the names Eric. He mumbled while staring at the list. Give me a second, I'll note it down. Eric took out a blank sheet of paper and a pen from his drawer. Okay go on, he mumbled as he leaned closer to the table and prepared to write. Yokohama F. Marinos, Kawasaki Frontale, Kashima Antlers, Urawa Red Diamonds and Bissell Kobe. Did you get it all Eric or do you want me to repeat again? Hiro inquired as he told him about the list of teams he prepared for himself. Sherbel, Scribble, all noted, and you have even included the three teams which I personally think are the best ones for you. Eric intoned as he let go of the pen in his hands. Can you look into this clubs and contact me after two hours Eric? Yeah, just give me some moment. I'll call you after some time. Okay then thank you for your help Eric. I'll hang up the call now. Have a good day. Hero wished him well and hung up the call. You too have a good day Hero. He mumbled as he hung up the call from his side. Ah, it's probably night there. Ha ha ha. Chapter 55 Final Say. Eric began to laugh all by himself as he remembered the time difference between the two countries. Seems like the person you were talking to means a lot to you Eric. Lucas exclaimed as he noticed Eric laughing all by himself. Also is it Japanese that you were speaking Eric? Ha ha ha, yeah, he's indeed someone special. Eric chuckled while putting the phone back in his pocket. He's a talent which I've scouted recently on my trip to Japan. The way he sees the field and exploits the spaces. 
his otherworldly first touch and ball control, his dribbling accompanied by his explosive pace. Everything about him is top-notch. Eric kept on singing the praises of Hero in front of Lucas without stopping. While Eric was singing the praises of Hero, Lucas kept on staring at him with a smile on his face. The words of Eric had piqued his interest on the player which he was mentioning about. You might think that I'm over-exaggerating. But trust me Lucas, he has the capability to be one of the best in the world. Finally he finished his sentence as he paused to take a moment to breathe. Whoa, that's a lot of praises. If you're complimenting him that much then he must be quite an extraordinary player. Lucas murmured while staring at Eric in awe. So when are you planning to present that talent to Europe? Lucas questioned, maybe in about eight years. As he heard Eric's reply, Lucas abruptly rose from his seat. Huh eight years, that long, don't tell me that he's a 13-year-old boy now. Lucas blurted out in disbelief. No, no, he's not a 13-year-old. Eric replied casually, then why so long Eric? Lucas questioned while lowering himself to take his seat, once again. Well he's only 10 years old right now. So it'll take him about 8 years to reach Europe. Once again Eric replied casually as if it wasn't a big deal. The casual tone of Eric had caught him off guard. And thus after hearing his reply, he murmured without thinking. Hmm, so he's only 10 years old huh? While placing his left hand on his chin and with his eyes closed, he slightly nodded his head. Suddenly his eyes widened as he realized something. Huh, 10 years old. The frequency of his tone increased as he abruptly rose from his seat in disbelief, once again. He's still a kid Eric. Lucas intoned while staring at Eric with his eyes wide open. Upon witnessing the expression on Lucas's face, Eric rose from his chair and began to walk towards Lucas. Indeed, he's still a kid Lucas. But just because he's still a kid doesn't mean his talent isn't real. Remember, Barcelona had discovered about Messi's potential while he was still a kid as well. Eric mumbled while walking towards him. I'm not doubting your claims Eric. But how amazing can a kid who's only 10 years old be for you to compliment him that much? Lucas inquired. Upon hearing his questions, Eric took his phone out from his pocket and clicked on the YouTube. He then began to search for Hero's YouTube channel's name on the search bar. You'll know once you look at this video. Eric exclaimed while handing over his phone to Lucas. Except some moment of entertainment, what's even there to learn from a kid's YouTube video? Lucas mumbled while turning, his attention towards the video. He wasn't the type of person who liked to waste his time by spending time on social media. Most of the times, he preferred to spend his time in gym and train himself. He simply was the type of person who'd rather spend time improving himself than waste his time on something meaningless. In simple words, he was a hard-working person who was very serious about his career. And as soon as he had heard about the age of the player which Eric was mentioning about, his interest in him had already died down. But despite that he had reluctantly agreed to watch the video for Eric's sake. And by no means was he interested in watching a kid's YouTube video. And if it weren't for Eric's pestering, he wouldn't have even glanced at the video when there was a much serious issue left to be discussed. They still had to discuss about Lucas's transfer to Crystal Palace. So he's performing a crossbar challenge huh? Lucas mumbled while gazing at the phone in his hand. In that video, Hero had performed two challenges and crossbar challenge was the first one. He had tried to hit the crossbar continuously from five different spots in that video. Three from outside the box and one each from either side of the corner. Not bad, Lucas mumbled after witnessing his first kick from the middle spot of outside the box. But is it all that he's capable of? The next two kicks were from the right and left edge of the D box and he hit the crossbar from both the spots as well. Three on three, Lucas mumbled as he witnessed him accurately hitting the crossbar from three different spots consecutively. Oh, he's heading for corner now. That's a bit challenging, Lucas mumbled while watching Hero walk towards the left corner of the pitch for his fourth kick. And he makes it four on four. But it must be a fluke. Or he might have even took several kicks before posting the video on YouTube. Still unwilling to accept Hero's talent, he wasn't impressed by his challenges. Hero had precisely hit the crossbar from five different spot in that video without missing a single one. And for the next challenge, he had performed free kick challenge in which he had taken three free kicks from three different spots on the field. The last one being from the kickoff spot. If it isn't staged or edited then I must say that boy is indeed talented. But if it's staged then all I can say is that you've been fooled Eric. Lucas exclaimed while returning him his phone back. What do you take me for Lucas? I'm not someone stupid who can't differentiate between an influencer and an athlete. 
I've seen him play live with my own eyes. And in this video you haven't even seen a tenth of what he's capable of. Eric exasperated while returning back to his chair. At around 9 p.m. while being seated at his study table, Hiro kept on looking at his phone, time and again, awaiting for Eric's call. Continuously tapping his foot against the floor, he couldn't stop himself from checking his phone. Eric said that he would call me in two hours. But it's already been two hours so why is he not calling me? Hiro murmured while staring at his phone. Should I call him instead? Hiro mumbled while stretching his fingers towards Eric's phone number. No it'll make me look impatient. Let's just wait for a little more. And if he doesn't call me in an hour, I'll call him myself. Saying such, he pulled his hand back and rose from his chair to divert his attention from his phone. And somehow he managed to refrain himself from calling Eric. Now what should I do to keep myself occupied for an hour? He wondered, maybe I can juggle the ball for about an hour. Saying such, he walked towards the ball which was kept beside his closet. And just as he was about to lift the ball up, he remembered that it was still night time. Thank God, I didn't hit the ball or else I would have woken up my parents. So now what should I do to pass time? He wondered after barely stopping himself from juggling the ball so late in the night at his room. Maybe I should watch the highlight of the previous year's World Cup final. He mumbled as he sat down and grabbed his phone. Man I want to represent my country too. He whispered as he witnessed Mbappe winning the World Cup at the only age of 19. I should probably aim for the 2023's U-17 World Cup. At that time I would be 14 by then. He began to imagine himself already in the pitch wearing his country's jersey. Ring, ring, ring. Just then while he was dreaming about making his debut for his national team, his phone started to ring. Coming back to his senses, he looked at his phone and noticed Eric's number. Eric was finally calling him after two and a half hours. Hello Eric. He spoke as he brought his phone closer to his ear after picking Eric's call. Hero, I've talked with the coaches of the five teams you've mentioned about. And although each and every one of their projects seems promising, I have narrowed the list onto two from the original list of five teams. Eric replied, you should go with either Kawasaki Frontale or Yokohama F. Marinos. Eric gave his decision, although both of the teams wants to test you out before signing you. But you should go with either of the two teams. Based on the performance you show them during the test they are willing to provide you with full scholarship that would cover your expenses for dorm fee, school fees, travel expenses and everything you'd require during your stay at the club. Chapter 56 Trip to Kawasaki June 27, 2019 At around 8.10 a.m., while Hiro was packing his cleats and shin guards in his bag, he heard his mother's voice coming from downstairs. Hiro hurry up, we'll miss the flight if you continue to delay us like this. Just as he heard her voice, he quickly stuffed his towel and spare clothes inside his backpack. After stuffing his spare clothes and cleats in his backpack, he zipped his bag. He then hurriedly grabbed a random shirt from his closet and began to get dressed. After getting dressed, he grabbed his backpack and left his room in a hurry. Careful, careful, you might trip and injure yourself. She mumbled as she saw him running down the stairs in a hurry. Even so he didn't slow down his descent and continued to run down the stairs without paying any attention towards her words. Geez, just why do you always get so late? She exasperated while looking at him. You know that we're only going there for you. And yet you're acting such irresponsibly. If you hadn't slept back again after I woke you up, we wouldn't have been rushing like this. She continued to nag him. As usual he had fallen back to sleep immediately after she had left his room after waking him up. I'll wake up on time from next time mom. But let's hurry up for now. Or else we'll really miss the flight. He mumbled as he finished tying his laces. Hiro and his mother were heading towards Kawasaki City which was located in Kanagawa Prefecture to visit the club Kawasaki Frontale. About a week ago, he had agreed to go with Eric's decision of checking out both the clubs which he had shortlisted for him. And thus for that reason, he was leaving for Kawasaki City with his mother to visit the one of the shortlisted club by Eric. While his father couldn't come with them because of his work, his mother was accompanying him on his trip to Kawasaki. Mom, is dad really not going to come with us? He questioned his mother while they were preparing to leave the house. Their trip to Kawasaki was a three-day event, though he was only required to show up at the club for a day. And he had two days left to spare, and in those leftover time, he could go sightseeing and enjoy his time at the city as much as he wanted. Thus, he wanted all of them to go together so that all of them could spend some quality family time together in a new city. 
Dad's company is really short on staff this time around. So we'll have to go by ourselves this time. But he has promised to go with you for your visit to the next club. She replied with a smile on her face. Even though she too was upset by his absence, she kept the smile on her face, nonetheless. She didn't want to show her worried expression to her son. And thus while replying to him, she forced a smile on her face. After about half an hour later, they arrived at the entrance of the airport in a cab. As the cab drove inside the airport, he noticed a lot of people in the airport while peeking outside his window. And even though it wasn't a weekday, the airport was still flooded with people's going in and out of the airport. Here is your 5,000 yen. She handed the cab fare to the driver after he finished unloading their luggage. Thank you for riding in my cab. After receiving the money, the cab driver wished them well and stormed outside the airport. Now should we hurry up inside as well? His mother inquired as she took out a handlebar from the luggage bag. Um, he nodded his head and started to walk towards the airport alongside his mother. After reaching the waiting room of the airport, his mother left him all by himself to go to the counter to verify their tickets. May I have your tickets ma'am? A young lady who was wearing a maroon colored uniform asked as she approached the counter. Here you go. She took out tickets for two people from inside her black colored designer handbag with a logo of soccer a flower embedded on it and handed it over to the receptionist. Let's see. Your flight is scheduled for 9.30 a.m. Even though there's still time left for the flight to depart. You're late ma'am. The receptionist exclaimed as she began to verify her tickets. I'm sorry. She apologized upon hearing her words. All verified. Here you go ma'am. Try to be on time from next time onwards. You might miss your flight if you don't reach the airport on time. The receptionist from the counter advised her to be punctual from next time onward, while she handed back the tickets to her after verifying it. Thank you for your service. She thanked the receptionist after receiving the tickets and walked towards the waiting room where Hiro was waiting for her. Passenger for the plane Kawasaki 0H60 that's going to take off from Tokushima to Kawasaki at 9.30 a.m. are requested to head towards the boarding area. That would be our flight. She mumbled after hearing the announcement. Let's go. After passing through a security checkup and customs, they headed towards the boarding area where they boarded a bus that would take them to the plane. After traveling for about two and a half hours, they finally landed on an airport near Kawasaki City. Sigh. Finally here. Hiro revealed a deep sigh and began to stretch his body. After reclaiming their luggage, they began to walk towards the waiting room. While walking towards the waiting room, they noticed a man dressed in black suit holding a board with Hiro's name on it. That uncle must be the guy sent by the club. Hiro exclaimed while pointing at the man with the board with his name on it. Since they were new to the city, the club had hired a person to act as their guide. And that man who was holding the board with his name written on it was the person hired by the club to act as their guide during their time at the city. Takahashi Hiro, that's me. He spoke while approaching the man with the board. Hello Hiro, I'm Yoichiro Musashi, the guy hired by Kawasaki Frontale to act as your guide during your stay at the city. That man dressed in the black suit introduced himself. And this here is my mother Takahashi Momo. You can address her as Mrs. Takahashi. While pointing at his mother, he introduced his mother to the man in front. Hello Mrs. Takahashi, he greeted her while bowing his head. His mother greeted him back while bowing her head as well. I have parked my car outside. So shall we head to your hotel first? He inquired. May I carry your luggage to the car ma'am? It's all right Mr. Musashi. I can carry the luggage by myself. She denied his help and insisted on carrying her luggage by herself. Well if you say so. But it's my job to assist you Mrs. Takahashi. So I insist you to hand me the luggage. He asked politely. Even though she had denied his help previously, he was adamant to do the job he was hired for. Hearing such polite words from him, she could no longer refuse his help. And hence she agreed to let him carry their luggage towards the car. After about 20 minutes of driving, they arrived at their hotel. Damn, the hotel looks too bland. Hiro mumbled while rubbing his eyes. He couldn't believe that it was the place where they were going to spend two nights. Mom is this the correct hotel? He questioned his mother while pointing at the hotel in front. With nothing fancy, the hotel looked very ordinary. Ordinary to the point where one could hardly tell if it was even a hotel or not. And if not for the sign of hotel, people might even mistook it for someone's house. The hotel was a three-storied building made up of red bricks and tiles on the slanted roof atop with a small lawn in front. Yes, it's the hotel where we'll be staying during our time at the city. 
his mother addressed to his claims while taking out the luggage from the car. And just as she took out the luggage, she narrowed her eyes towards him and exclaimed, Do you have any problem with my arrangements? But why such bore? Just as he was about to speak something, he paused midway after noticing her gaze towards him. No ma'am, I've got no problems. He quickly changed his sentence after witnessing her gaze. Good, it was the only cheap hotel I could find on the internet after all. She exclaimed as she diverted her attention towards the hotel. Except for the guide hired by the club, they weren't sponsored for their trip to Kawasaki by the club. And his mother had to pay the expenses out of her own pocket. Thus, she had tried to cut as much expense as possible by selecting the cheapest hotels. Chapter 57 Time at the Hotel After spending almost an entire day, sleeping in his hotel room, his eyes opened as the golden rays of the setting sun fell on his eyes after piercing its way through the gaps of the curtains. While still lying on his bed with his eyes open, he leisurely turned his head around and strolled his eyes towards the window at his right. Even though the long red-colored curtains dangled freely in front of the window while blocking the rays of sunlight coming from outside, somehow from the gaps of the curtains the light from the sun still managed to find its way inside the room. And those strands of lights which pierced through the gaps of the curtains was painting the whole room in warm colors. The familiar yet unfamiliar room which he had been staying in for less than six hours was dimly lit in golden hues. With nothing fancy, the room consisted of two beds which were pulsed side by side with only a single drawer separating the two of them from merging into a single bed. The gap between the two beds was barely enough to fit two people when placed side by side. At the end of his feet, at a certain distance away from his bed there lied a simple closet made up of wood. With nothing besides two beds, a closet and a drawer, the only attraction in the room was a white-colored flower vase made up of porcelain clay with patterns of blue hibiscus embedded on it, placed atop the drawer. After looking around for a while, he rose up from his bed and walked towards the window. He then pushed aside the curtains and opened the window. Just as he opened the window, a gust of cold breeze rushed towards him from the open window. While trying to shade his eyes from the cold breeze, he immediately lowered his head and covered his eyes with his right hand. His curly black hair and the curtains dangled and danced as the gust of cold breeze blew past them. Finally as he lowered his hands and opened his eyes, he noticed his mother seated in the front yard alongside with the owner of the restaurant who happened to be an elderly old woman. Since he had only met her for a brief moment while checking in, he didn't have much information about her. The only thing he knew about her was her name. What is she talking with Mrs. Mori? He mumbled while looking at them. Seeing his mother and the owner cheerfully gossiping with each other while sipping tea in the front yard, he wondered what they were gossiping about. Those cheerful smiles made him curious about the topic of their gossip. Growl tilde tilde. Just as he was observing his mother and the owner of the hotel gossiping in the front yard, his stomach made a growling noise. Seems like I need to eat something first. He mumbled while grabbing his stomach. Since he hadn't ate anything since morning besides the light meal provided in the airplane, it was only natural for his stomach to make such weird noises. After that he rushed downstairs towards the dining hall, to get something to eat. And since the dining hall was just at the right side of the entrance of the first floor, he had remembered its location earlier when they checked in for their room. While walking down the stairs, he noticed a young girl with pale white skin and straight black hair sitting in the reception desk. Upon casting his gaze at her, he started to wonder about the identity of the girl in front. After all her face was new to him and he hadn't seen her during his earlier visit. And just as he was about to walk past her, the girl from the reception spoke. You must be Hero, right? Er, um, yes, he replied while slightly nodding his head. How did you know my name? He questioned her while slowly wandering his eyes towards her. Since he hadn't introduced himself to her, it was only natural for him to wonder how she had came to know about his identity. You and your mother are the only guests staying in the hotel today. So it's only natural for me to know your name. She replied while smiling. Since most of the people preferred to stay at a fancy restaurant during their trip away from home, the hotel that they were staying in wasn't famous among the people and it was almost completely empty at the time of their stay. And because of its dull appearance, people normally avoided that hotel even though it was way cheaper than other fancy restaurants. And that day only he and his mother were staying at the hotel. That makes sense. He mumbled after hearing her answers. Are you one of the employee who works in this hotel? Ha ha, yeah, you can say that. She chuckled while replying. But aren't you a bit too young to work? He questioned her, feeling all confused. Since her appearance was that of a young girl in her teens, he couldn't help but wonder her reason behind working in that hotel. Oh my, are you asking me about my 
Age, you do know that it's rude to ask a girl about her age. Her eyes widened as she covered her mouth while looking at him. She then started to tease him in her girly voice. Also aren't you moving way too fast? I mean you don't even know my name yet. She continued to tease him, while hiding her smiles behind her hands. Upon hearing her replies, his cheeks started to turn as red as an apple. Blinking his eyes rapidly, his heart skipped a beat as he noticed her smiling face. He began to have trouble maintaining eye contact with her. And thus, he diverted his gaze away from her. However her teasing continued, and just when he was about to open his mouth, he heard a voice from behind him. Oh, hero, you're awake. The voice belonged to his mother. As he turned behind to face his mother after hearing her voice, he found her standing in front of the entrance alongside the owner of the hotel. With a relatively small stature of 5 feet 2 inches, her time-worn pale skin was covered with wrinkles around her eyes and temple. While looking at her, one could hardly ignore her winter white hair atop her head and the mole beside her monolid eyes. They were the defining features of her face. Io, Iko, when will you stop with your jokes? Mrs. Mori spoke while looking at the girl at the receptionist's desk. I didn't mean to tease him grandma, but what can I do? His reaction was just too cute to ignore. The girl at the reception desk replied while still laughing. Sorry for my granddaughter's immaturity. Despite being an adult, she still acts like an immature kid. Mrs. Mori apologized to Hiro for her granddaughter's behavior. The girl sitting in front of him was Aiko Mori, the granddaughter of the owner of the hotel. Oh no, you don't have to apologize. I don't mind. He spoke while turning his head slightly towards the girl at the reception desk and stealing a glance of her. You should learn something from this boy here. Despite being only 10 years old, his behavior is much more mature than you who's already 18 years old. Mrs. Mori spoke while staring at her granddaughter. What you're only 10 years old? Aiko intoned with her eyes wide open. As he heard her, he simply nodded his head without speaking anything. And here I thought they you'd be at least 15 or 16 years old. Because of his actions and bodily features, she had assumed him to be a teenager at the least. And here I got my hopes up for nothing. Just what kind of sports do you play to build such an amazing body? She whispered while diverting her eyes away from him. Forgive her for saying such things. She is just influenced by those K-pop stuffs. And because of that she just can't control herself whenever she sees a boy with pretty appearance like that of yours. Mrs. Mori mumbled while trying to shrug her whining. Aiko was a girl who was 18 years of age with a round-shaped face. With a little mascara over her monolid eyes and some lip gloss on her lips, she had done some light makeup over her face. And just like many girls her age, she was a K-pop fan girl. Meaning she idolized those pretty boys from the Korean music groups and simped over them. And even the reason why she started conversation with him was because of his pretty appearance. Forget about her. I heard that you haven't eaten anything since your last meal at the plane. While Aiko was muttering something by herself in the background, Mrs. Mori inquired him if he was feeling hungry or not. Hearing her words, he nodded his head. Let's go and have something to eat. You need to maintain your body in order to become a good footballer after all. She mumbled as she started to lead the way towards the dining hall. Footballer. Aiko shouted as she heard the word footballer. Chapter. 58 Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium. June 28, 2019. With the appearance of the golden light across the sky from the east side of the horizon, the shimmering lights of twinkling stars started to fade away, along with the black heavens. Slowly and gradually as the brightness of the golden light intensified, the piping hot red sphere of sun made its appearance from the direction of the light. And as the sun began to rise over the horizon, the sky became aglow with a tapestry of red and orange hues. While Hiro was taking his sweet time packing his cleats and shin guards inside his bag in his hotel room, Mr. Musashi was waiting for him outside his hotel. Hiro hurry up, we need to leave ASAP. His mother spoke while putting on her shoes. And as she finished putting on her shoes, she placed the key of the room on the bed close to the door. I'll be waiting for you outside. So make sure to come fast. And make sure to lock the room before you leave, okay? Saying such she grabbed the doorknob and twisted it. She then opened the door and left the room in a hurry. Finally as he finished packing his stuffs inside his bag, he zipped his bag. He then lifted his bag and left his room in a hurry. Running down the stairs, he rushed outside the hotel. Good morning hero. Mr. Musashi greeted him while opening the door of the car for him. Good morning Mr. Musashi. Hiro greeted him back while hopping inside the car. And as he made himself comfortable, his mother and Mr. 
Musashi both of them hopped on the car as well. While Mr. Musashi took the steering, his mother sat beside him in the back seat. Fasten your seatbelt, Mr. Musashi spoke as he stepped on the accelerator. After about 20 minutes of car ride, they arrived near the stadium of Kawasaki Frontale Club. We're here, Mr. Musashi exclaimed while driving the car towards the stadium of the club. Where? Hiro mumbled while looking outside the window. While casting his gaze outside the window, he noticed several buildings and stores painted in black and blue color. Almost every store in the buildings were showcasing either the banner of the club or the logo of the club. While driving through those streets painted in black and blue, Hiro couldn't refrain himself from feeling excited. And even though, he didn't see the stadium of the club while looking outside his window, he could feel the attachment of the people living in those streets for the club in their neighborhood. Look ahead, Mr. Musashi spoke while driving the car in a straight road between the streets. The stadium of the Kawasaki Frontale Club was just at the end of the straight road which they were driving in, at the moment. Upon hearing his reply, he excitedly took his head out from the window and looked in front of him. The giant stadium of Kawasaki Frontale Club which had the capacity to host more than 26,000 people at once became even more gigantic as they approached near the stadium. Don't stick your head outside the window. His mother intoned as she pulled his head inside. Sorry, I got too excited. He apologized for his reckless behavior. Finally as they arrived in front of the entrance of the club, Mr. Musashi hit the brake all of a sudden. The gate ahead was blocked. A black and yellow striped log-like structure was placed at the entrance blocking the pathway of the vehicles and also preventing people from entering the club. Just then a man dressed in blue uniform made his way towards their car. The stadium has not opened yet. The man spoke grumpily as he got near to the car. I'm hired by the club. Mr. Musashi spoke as he pulled out a card from his pocket. He then handed the card to the man in front of the car. The man kept on staring at the card for a while. And as he finished, checking the validity of the card, the man lifted the barrier. I'm sorry I didn't realize that you're hired by the club. The man in uniform apologized for stopping them previously while letting them inside the gate. No worries, you're only doing your job. Mr. Musashi replied while driving past the guard, towards the parking lot. And as he parked his car, Hiro and his mother got out of the car. Giant posters of the players of the club were displayed on the outer walls of the stadium. Alongside the posters was a gigantic painting of the club's logo. With a picture of dolphin in between the vertical stripes of black and blue, the logo was completed with a gigantic text of Kawasaki above the dolphin. He marveled while looking at those posters and the gigantic stadium in front of his eyes. Let's head inside, Mr. Musashi spoke as he got out from his car. After parking the car at the parking lot, Mr. Musashi began to guide them inside the stadium. And even after verifying their identity at the front gate, they still had to verify their identity and purpose multiple times to the staffs while making their way towards the ground. Finally after walking for a while, he found himself in front of the tunnel which lead to the pitch of Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium. While inside the stadium, he wandered his eyes around him. The walls were painted with portraits of the club legends and philosophy of the club. Suddenly while making his way towards the pitch, the surrounding around him started to get darker. Why did it get dark all of a sudden? He wondered as his eyes struggled to adapt to the darkness. Careful, there are stairs in front, Mr. Musashi warned him, while leading the way. Just then as he casted his gaze towards the direction of Mr. Musashi, he noticed a sign glowing in red color. The sign was indicating the presence of stairs in front. While walking down the stairs, he noticed a bright light coming from at the end of the tunnel. And as he made his way towards the light, he found himself at the pitch of the Kawasaki Todoroki Stadium. Whoa, the stadium looks damn magnificent. With his eyes opened and jaw dropped, he mumbled while looking at the seats of the stadium in front. The magnificent sight of the stadium had paralyzed him in his place. While he was marveling at the sight of the stadium, he heard a voice coming from behind him. Magnificent right, I agree, he mumbled without thinking while staring at the stadium in front. One day you'll play in this stadium, the voice from behind him stated. Still unaware of the presence of the person behind him, he nodded his head. Then can we start the trial now? Can't we wait a little more Mr. Musashi? He spoke while turning his head back. And as he turned his head back, he was greeted with an unfamiliar face. Upon witnessing the unfamiliar person, he clumsily retracted a few steps back. For that whole time when he was hearing that voice coming from behind him, he had assumed that the voice belonged to Mr. Musashi. 
But on the contrary, the voice belonged to a silvery gray bearded old man with a dad bod. Dressed in a black tracksuit and a whistle hung in his neck. With a round face and small monolith eyes, he had the appearance of laughing Buddha with gray beard. May I ask who you are sir? Hiro questioned the person in front. Ha ha ha, the man who's going to conduct your trial today. The man replied while laughing. Just then Mr. Musashi made his way towards Hiro. Oh you've already met him. He's Makoto Kenzaki, the youth coach of Kawasaki Frontale Club. The bearded man with a dad bod was the U18 coach of the Kawasaki Frontale Club. What? He's the coach? Hiro blurted out in disbelief. He couldn't believe how someone like him could coach. A professional youth team. Yes, he's the coach. So you should watch what you speak. Mr. Musashi intoned after hearing his poor choice of words. I'm sorry Mr. Kenzaki. I didn't mean to belittle you. Hiro apologized for speaking ill of him. Ha ha ha. Don't worry. Don't worry. I get that a lot. Mr. Kenzaki replied with a smile. He didn't mind his choice of words. I get that a lot after all. But let me remind you, a coach works with his mind not with his body. I'll remember it from next time onwards. Hiro nodded his head. Now then shall we test out your skills? Mr. Kenzaki questioned while looking at him. Hiro nodded his head. Then you should go get changed. Yoichiro will show you the way towards the locker room. And if you look at the front seat of the locker room you'll find a jersey. Just change into that jersey and come to the pitch in 5 minutes. I'll test your physicality. Chapter 59 First Test After getting dressed in the jersey provided by the club, he made his way towards the pitch dressed in a black and blue jersey. And as he made his way towards the pitch after getting dressed, he was greeted with yet another unfamiliar face in the pitch. Another old man who was dressed in a gray tracksuit was seen conversing with Makoto Kenzaki, the youth coach. Now who is he? Hiro blurted out all of sudden while witnessing the appearance of another unfamiliar face in the pitch. He's Nozomi Kenzaki, younger brother of coach Makoto Kenzaki. He's the manager of U15 team of Kawasaki Frontale Club. And he's also the assistant of coach Makoto. Mr. Musashi who was accompanying him, replied after hearing him. Unlike Makoto Kenzaki, the manager of U18 team, his younger brother Nozomi Kenzaki had a rather tall and emaciated body. With a rather emaciated face with revealing cheekbones accompanied by his monolith eyes, the rectangular clean-shaven face of manager Nozomi gave Hiro the impression of Frankenstein. Go warm up and loosen up your body. Manager Makoto spoke as he approached him, while setting up the training cones in a zigzag pattern. Hearing such he began to stretch his body. For about a minute, he stretched his lower body. After that he shifted his focus on his upper body for another minute. And finally for about 30 seconds, he performed an aggressive sprint to complete his warm-up. Hiro come here, manager Makoto yelled while calling his name. Just as he finished his sprint, manager Makoto called him. Hearing him calling his name, he immediately ran towards him. I believe you have finished warming up right? Or do you still need some more time to warm up? Manager Makoto asked while looking at him. No sir, I've warmed up enough. Hiro intoned in a loud voice. Good. Then let's start the test without any delay. We'll be recording your pace on and off the ball for our first test. Do you see that ball over there? Manager Makoto spoke while pointing at the ball at the kickoff spot. Yes sir. Hiro intoned while nodding his head. For your first test, I want you to sprint from this side of endline towards that ball as fast as you can. And as you reach the ball, I want you to again sprint towards the opposite endline with the ball without pausing in between. Do you understand? Manager Makoto began to explain him about his first test. He wanted him to sprint towards the ball which was placed at the kickoff spot from the end line of one side. And after reaching the ball, he was again required to sprint towards the opposite end line with the ball on his feet without stopping. The test was designed to test his pace both on and off the ball. Well apart from the length of the field, the test doesn't look that challenging. Hiro thought while looking at the ball in front. Just when he was. Taking the test lightly, manager Makoto added another condition. Also while coming back, you need to come with the ball. And do you see this cones placed in front of you? Manager Makoto inquired while pointing towards the cones placed in a zigzag pattern. Hiro nodded his head. This cones aren't here for the show or for the next test. You need to dribble through this cones and shoot the ball inside the net from outside the box. And only after the goal lands inside the net, your time will be recorded. Do you understand? He continued, the second condition has made the test a little more challenging, but it's still manageable if I lower my pace in between. He thought while looking at the pitch. 
Ding. New quest unlocked. Impress the Kenzuki brothers and complete the test given by manager Makoto in less than 3 minutes. Reward on completion. 1 golden roulette ticket. Penalty on failure. Deduction of 5 random stat points. Note. The quest is mandatory and thus you cannot refuse the quest. What? This freaking system wants me to sprint this whole field without slowing down my pace. If I slow my pace even for a second I'll fall behind the time set by the system and fail the quest. Hiro thought while contorting his face, after looking at the quest provided by the system. While looking at the quest provided by the system, he was lost in his thoughts. And thus, for a while he didn't reply anything at all. He just kept on staring blankly at the system notification in front of his eyes. Do you understand? Manager Makoto yelled while looking at him. Yes sir. Upon hearing his voice, he came back to his senses. While coming back to his senses, he yelled on top of his voice. Even though the quest was challenging, he was prepared to challenge himself to his limit. He was prepared to surpass his limits. Since his growth had became stagnant for quite a while, he had vowed to himself that he would take on any challenges without any complaints. Thus, despite the challenging quest given by the system, he accepted the quest without any complaints. Smack. Good. Then let's start the test. Manager Makoto exclaimed while smacking him on his back. Along with Coach Makoto and Coach Nozomi, Hiro walked towards the end line of the pitch. And as he prepared himself to run, Coach Makoto questioned. Are you ready? Um. Hiro mumbled while nodding his head. System activate skill focus. Skill focus activated. To immerse himself on the task in front of him, he activated the skill focus. Manager Makoto then lifted the whistle hung in his neck towards his lips. 3.2.1. Beep. As Manager Makoto blew the whistle, Manager Nozomi lowered his head towards the stopwatch in his hand and pressed the start button of his stopwatch. With the sound of whistle, Hero stormed towards the ball placed at the kickoff spot. Because of the activation of skill focus, he was solely focused on the ball in front of him. He truly runs like a wild horse. Manager Makoto mumbled in awe while witnessing his run. Indeed it hasn't even been 20 seconds and he's already approaching the ball. Manager Nozomi replied while looking at his stopwatch. It didn't take him long to reach the ball. Just within 25 seconds, he reached the ball. Maybe he'll complete the test within 2 minutes. Coach Nozomi mumbled while pressing the stop button of his stopwatch. He then noted down his time on his notebook which he was carrying inside his tracksuit's pocket. While looking at his impressive run, Coach Nozomi assumed him to finish the test within two minutes. However, his speed decreased during his time at the ball. And by the time he shot the ball towards the goalpost after dribbling through the cone, two minutes 27 seconds had passed. On Coach Nozomi's stopwatch, beep, as the ball landed inside the net, Coach Makoto blew his whistle and ended the first test. And as soon as the whistle sounded, he crashed down on the floor from exhaustion. Contrary to his expectation, sprinting the whole field was much tougher than expected. His final time was 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Quite impressive timing for someone of his age. Coach Nozomi mumbled while looking at his notebook. Because of his impressive start, he had reached the ball at just 24.37 seconds. And if not for the ball slowing down his pace, he would have completed the whole test within one and a half minutes. Chapter 60 Second Test just as the first test came to an end with the sound of whistle from manager Makoto, Hiro threw himself on the ground and collapsed on the floor. Huff, huff, with steams of sweat oozing out from his body, he began to pant heavily while lying on the ground with his face facing the sky. Damn, I never imagined that a three-minute sprint would tire me out like this. I really need to work on my physicality to increase my work rate. He thought while shading his eyes from the sun. Just as he lifted his hand down and opened his eyes, a silhouette of a person appeared in front of him, blocking his view of the sky. While trying to get a better view of the person, he narrowed his eyes. And as he narrowed his eyes, the appearance of the person became much more visible. The person standing in front of him was manager Makoto Kenzuki. Rest for about a minute and we'll begin the second test immediately. Manager Makoto exclaimed while standing in front of him, shading him from the sun. While he was resting on the pitch, manager Nozomi walked towards the sidelines and brought a sack of balls with him. Time's up. Now get up. Manager Makoto yelled after the specified time for rest came to an end. Hearing such, he pressed his hands on the ground and uplifted him from the ground. And as he uplifted himself from the ground, he brought his hand closer to his face and wiped off the sweat from his face. After wiping off the sweat from his face, he made his way towards the coaches. 
Okay now we'll begin the second test. For the second test we'll be testing your ball control and shot accuracy. And to do that manager Nozomi will be supplying you with crosses from different spots on the field. And you can either shoot the ball after trapping the ball or you can shoot the ball at the very first touch. But remember you cannot touch the ball for more than two times. The crosses might be irregular too. So pay attention to the ball and watch out for wild passes. Just as he finished describing him about the second test, manager Makoto dropped an indirect hint. And for the second test, he was required to score goals from the crosses of manager Nozomi. As simple as manager Makoto made it sound, the second test was rather tricky. Since he had to predict the projectile of the ball and the type of pass before even trapping the ball or shooting the ball, he was required to pay extra attention to the ball. While trapping and shooting were the easiest part of the second test, the tricky part was to predict the projectile of the ball. Well aside from the wild passes which he mentioned about, there's nothing else to worry about the second test. He thought after hearing the details of the second test. Just as he finished describing him about the details of the second test, manager Nozomi ran towards the left corner of the side of field they were staying in at the moment. Okay are you ready? Manager Makoto inquired after manager Nozomi assumed his position. He nodded his head slightly while assuming his position inside the penalty box. Beep. Manager Nozomi performed a three-second run-up. Before kicking the ball inside the penalty box, the ball flew towards the outer edge of the penalty box. And since he had already predicted the projectile of the ball, he had already placed himself at the position where the ball was going to land. After assuming some height, the ball started to make its descent. And as the ball descended downward towards him, he comfortably trapped the ball in his chest and shot the ball with his right foot in mid-air before it even fell down. And as the ball left his feet, it flew towards the post like a missile. Just like in matches, his first touch really is impressive. Manager Makoto mumbled in awe after witnessing his perfect volley. After that first volley, Manager Makoto kept on supplying him with even more challenging crosses. Sometimes he made him run towards him with his short crosses while sometimes he made him run far away from him with his powerful long crosses. As if he was playing tennis with him with the football, he kept on making him run all over the pitch with his irregular crosses. But despite that he didn't miss even a single ball. And neither did he touch the ball more than two times in that whole test nor did he complain about the intensity of the test. Just when will this end? Isn't it already enough? Like you've already seen me score about 60 times without violating your conditions. Just how much more are you going to grind me? He mumbled while contorting his face. He then casted his gaze towards coach Nozomi who was assuming his position at right side of the half-line, preparing himself to take his 60th cross. Huh, is he smiling? He mumbled after witnessing the smile on manager Nozomi's face. Witnessing his smile, he turned his gaze towards manager Makoto. And even he was smiling as well. While Hiro was suffering, both of the Kenzuki brothers were enjoying themselves. I'm damn sure that the test should have ended way ago. But since I kept on scoring without complaining, they continued the test out of excitement. He mumbled while looking at their smiling faces. Since the coaches were completely overtaken by their excitement, he decided to take the matter in his hands and end the test by himself. I need to do something. Beep. Just as manager Makoto blew his whistle, manager Nozomi shot the ball hard towards Hiro. At first the ball seemed like it was going to head right but because of the spin on the ball, it curved and changed its trajectory towards left. Predicting the trajectory of the ball, Hiro placed himself at the location where the ball was going to land. Determined to take the matter in his hands, instead of shooting the ball towards the post behind him, he shot the ball in mid-air towards the opposite post. Although his shot wasn't powerful enough to reach the opposite post without dropping, the ball still managed to find its way inside the opposite post after bouncing twice. I think that much is enough for the second test. Manager Makoto mumbled while rubbing his hair. Yeah, I think it's enough as well. Manager Nozomi parroted to his older brother's statement and agreed to end the second test. Sigh. Hearing their statements, he revealed a deep sigh of relief while throwing himself on the ground once again. He was simply too exhausted to stand striot. With that 60th cross, the test finally came to an end after almost an hour of shooting the ball repeatedly. So how many did he score? Manager Makoto inquired as he concluded the end of the second test. Along with supplying crosses to Hiro, Manager Nozomi was also noting down his progress on his notebook. 60 out of 60, no misses. 39 without trapping and 21 with trapping. Manager Nozomi replied to Manager Makoto's question while looking at his notebook. Damn, he's a monster, Manager Makoto intoned.